This this is the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. I'm Stephen A. Noon, everybody. Welcome to the latest edition of the Stephen A. Smith Show, coming at you as I love to do every weekday over the airwaves of ESPN Radio. That's Sirius. That's that's Sirius XM Channel 80. That's 710 ESPN LA, and of course, 98.7 FM. New York City. The number to call up as always is 866-729-ESPN. That's 866-729-3776. Got a jam-packed show coming your way on this particular afternoon. Lots of stuff to get into. Um, ladies and gentlemen, boy, do I have some news to tell y'all. Uh, I, you know, I've known it for quite some time, but I just think it's time to stop holding it in about Carmelo Anthony, about CP3, why CP3's in Houston, why Mello wants to go to Houston, all of this stuff that's going on, how the Lakers may end up. I, I mean, the stuff that's going on with the Los Angeles Lakers. Ladies and gentlemen, I, I just got, I can't wait to tell you. I can't wait to tell you. Stuff is getting very, very, very interesting, no question about it. But we're going to touch on the NBA for a different reason on this particular day, and for obvious reasons, of course, because Unless you've been living under a rock in the sports world, you should know that Kevin Durant made news yesterday. You should know that he made news because in an interview uh, with ESPN on Thursday, you know, during his hometown celebration, Seat Pleasant in Maryland celebrated Kevin Durant Day for all of his achievements on and off the court. He took some he took an opportunity to expound on a potentiality of a White House visit and how it's not something that he would ever do. And he said, I quote, I don't agree. He said, I wouldn't go. No, I won't do that. I don't respect who's in office right now, talking about our president, Donald Trump. He also goes a step further. I don't agree with what he agrees with. So my voice is going to be heard by not doing that. That's just me personally. But if I know my guys well enough, they'll all agree with me, end quote. Now, if you remember, Kevin Durant grew up 11 miles from downtown Washington, D.C. 11 miles. You know, the story talks about how since he was a kid, he dreamed of hoisting the Larry O'Brien championship trophy on the front steps of the White House. But because Trump is the one in office as opposed to former President Barack Obama, coupled with Trump's divisive rhetoric, according to Kevin Durant and anybody with sense, he would respectfully decline. He goes on and says, I just want to sit back and analyze everything and gather my thoughts. I wanted to say something immediately, but I definitely want to be the voice of where I come from and people who have come from my neighborhood and deal with oppression. I'm representing a lot of people. As far as what's going on in our country, for one, as an athlete, you have to commend Colin Kaepernick, LeBron James, Carmelo Anthony, CP3, Dwayne Wade for starting that conversation last year. Russell Westbrook also said something in his speech. A lot of guys with platforms have drove the conversation in a good direction. And what's going on in Charlottesville, that was unfathomable. This is Kevin Durant talking. Now, for those of you who were living under a rock, period, you know what happened last Saturday. White supremacist rally protesting the removal of a Robert E. Lee statue, General Robert E. Lee statue, who took up arms and actually fought against the country, believe it or not. Protest was organized in Charlottesville last week. A woman by the name of Heather Heyer, 32 years of age, was killed Saturday when a car allegedly driven by a guy by the name of James Alex Fields plowed into a crowd that was protesting the white nationalist. The neo-Nazis. Over 19 demonstrators were also injured. Durant believes the president played a role in the escalation of racial tensions in the United States and the public rise, the public rise of white supremacy. I'm reading from the article. He goes on to say, he's definitely driving it, talking about the president. I feel ever since he's gotten into office or since he ran for the presidency, our country has been so divided and it's not a coincidence. When President Obama was in office, things were looking up. We had so much hope in our communities where I come from because we had a black president and that was a first. So to see that and to be where we are now, it just felt like we took a turn for the worse, man. It all comes from who is in the administration. 
It comes from the top. Leadership trickles down to the rest of us. So, you know, if we have someone in office that doesn't care about all people, then we won't go anywhere as a country. In my opinion, until we get him out of here, we won't see any progress. Ladies and gentlemen, think about what Kevin Durant just said. Think about how profound those words are. I commend him for what he said. You know why? Because nothing he said was political. When he was talking about Barack Obama and where we were because he was the president of the United States, he's not talking about politics. He's not talking about liberal policies. He's not talking about the Constitution or amendment to the Constitution, the Affordable Care Act or anything else. He's talking about a man and the very embodiment of who he was and what he represented being perceived as as extreme progress for the nation. Because indeed, if you could have this man, a black man, as president of the United States of America, it speaks to how far we've come as a nation. And in the very next election, the very next election, after his presidency expires, we're listening to a man who tried to draw a moral equivalence between one protesting group and another. So if you're an athlete, there are people out there who think you shouldn't say a word. You shouldn't speak your mind. You shouldn't say a damn thing. Shut up and play basketball. That's what they're saying about Kevin Durant. Just like what they said about LeBron James. They'll recognize your right to do it, but they'll also exercise their right to consider and label you unappreciative of the position that you're in And the fact that this great country allows you to be in that position. That's how some people think. But they don't consider themselves fortunate to live in this nation and to have to have the ability to enjoy the same rights that they're saying people should be gratified over. This stuff is getting uglier and uglier by the day. But also beautiful, too. Because when I saw Malcolm Jenkins for the Philadelphia Eagles raise his fist and you saw Kyle Long, the son of the great Howie Long of Fox's NFL Sunday, my buddy who I haven't seen in a long time, but boy, I love him. And I'm not surprised at all that Chris and Kyle Long are the ones speaking up. White faces attached to this issue. Because they felt it was important to put a different face on it. And in the interest of full disclosure, ladies and gentlemen, let me echo right now what I said on the airwaves this morning on First Take on ESPN, as it is every weekday morning with my man Max Kellerman and Molly Karam. As a black person, I'd be remiss in neglecting to point out no matter what times you're talking about, but specifically as it pertains to civil rights era and beyond. There have been white activists out there too, willing to put their lives on the line and risk life and limb, careers and livelihoods to fight on behalf of justice and equality. And I appreciate the long family And their very presence alone and their position in these matters reminding us all of that. This is not about politics. It's about what we are as Americans. What we stand for and what we will not allow to sully this great nation of ours. Not just in terms of literal things. But optics, appearance, perspective. And presentation as well. Kevin Durant articulated that brilliantly yesterday. And he should be commended for it. And for those who don't and refuse to recognize him for that, shame on you. 866-729-ESPN is always the number to call up. That's 866-729-3776. We'll continue to talk about this subject. Plus, I will not hesitate to get in to what I alluded to at the top of the show. There's a lot of stuff that's going on 
in New York and L.A., particularly as it pertains to the Lakers, the Clippers, and the New York Knicks. Not just Carmelo Anthony and CP3. As the show progresses, I promise you I will explain. I will not let you down. I'm also getting to this MVP, NBA MVP, and what the odds are as to who will win it next season and why. I'm going to tell you why that's incredibly pertinent to the city of angels los angeles stick around you are listening live to Stephen a coming at you live from los angeles california today on the Stephen a smith show espn radio you're listening to the Stephen a smith show podcast so much to get into so much to get into on this particular day jay cutler played a game yesterday that doesn't mean a damn thing to me i don't expect much from him in the miami uh dolphins aaron donald could hold out for the year. I wouldn't blame him, even though I'm not asking them to pass up a guarantee in excess of $50 million. But the Rams have some nerves. But I went off about that yesterday. We all know that. Um, And, again, I promise you, at some point in time, I will definitely, definitely um, visit the conversation in regards to the Lakers, the Clippers, the New York Knicks, Mello and CP3. CP3 being gone from L.A., it's a lot of stuff to get into, and I most certainly will right here on the Stephen A. Smith Show, ESPN Radio. But let's get to the phones for a minute. Let's go to Chris in L.A. You're live with Stephen A. What's going on? Hey, Stephen A. Uh, appreciate you taking my call. I tried to chime in yesterday and the day before that uh, regarding what took place at ESPN with the whole auction and all that stuff. But uh, I'm not getting, I'm not going to... And I'm not going depth with that too much because uh, obviously you touched on that, but I just want to applaud you and Max because that's why I enjoy watching you guys on first take because you guys don't shy away from topics like that. I know I have to do with ESPN, but you guys don't shy away from topics like that. And I just, I, it's, it's very educational for me being an African American male. Uh, a lot of stuff that you touch on and Max touch on um, that it's just, it, it's, it's just a lot, Stephen A. And I just, I appreciate you and Max for that. Well, I appreciate um, that, but I sincerely hope that you appreciate it because we're willing to tackle the subjects. Because a lot of times, yes, people appreci- a lot of times people appreciate it when they agree with us. My point is, no, <laughs> I think you, I think Will Kane should be appreciated just as much because uh, he gives Absolutely. a different opinion. You well, see what I'm saying? It yes, ain't always about yes, agreeing yes. with it; it's our willingness to tackle it. But go ahead. I- Absolutely, yes. Will, Will as well. I forgot to mention Will, but Will as well. And you guys always have you got differences, but at the end of the day, you guys all always are come from different points of views, and I appreciate that. But yeah. I want to touch on also what uh, what happened with Kevin Durant and what uh, what he spoke about yesterday or this morning. I'm not sure when he brought it when he, when he brought it about, but um, I, I I didn't know. Steve, I had a question. I didn't know that the president has to invite teams. I thought that was something that was automatic, but that's something no. new to me. Um, but it's just something that um, I knew. Honestly, even from deep down, that it was coming, um, that players would go this route because of what's going on in the world today in society. Um, so it doesn't surprise me that KD did that. I mean, I would assume that Draymond and all those other guys would probably be on board with it. I mean, I'm not sure. I'm just guessing the speculation. But uh, what is your take on that as far as everybody well, moving forward? Th- I don't not think they'll be for it. I think Kevin Durant is absolutely right. I think you're going to see an abundance of guys follow his lead. And, and if Kevin Durant isn't going, it would not surprise me at all if all the players refuse to show up. Wouldn't surprise me all one bit. Them. Wouldn't surprise me one bit. You know what? Uh, yeah. What you going to do? You going to make him? You Joe Lake up. You Joe Lake, who I profoundly respect. He's the, he's the, he's the man. He's the CEO of the Golden State Warriors. Yeah. What you going to do? You going to make? Gonna try to make Kevin Durant come? You going to try to make that. Your, your new $207 million player, Steph Curry? <laughs> you going to try to make him do it? What you going to do? No. You, know, you no, better fall true. back. Better fall back. No, so I sure. can't see it. Chris, I appreciate the call, buddy. Thank you so much, man. Let's go to um, Michael. You're live with Stephen A. on ESPN Radio. What's up, Michael? How are you? Good afternoon. Good morning. Michael, are you there? Michael, we lost Michael. Hmm. Let's go to Sergio in Denver. You're live with Stephen A. What's going on, Sergio? How are you? Good. How's it going, Stephen? I'm doing all right. I was just, I'm sitting wrong with my eyes. I'm having difficulty seeing y'all names on the board. I don't know what the hell's wrong with me. Go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. All right. All right, Stephen. Um, I'm calling about the, yesterday you were talking about how uh, Roger has a lot of power, right? He's got too much power. And this morning, Greeny was saying that, um, and this, he makes this point a lot, that um, uh, basically a lot, of the, a lot of the players in the NFL, they have a short-term career, and they're, they're more worried really about their immediate benefit instead of the long-term benefit. 
And that's the reason being, that's the reason why basically they're just not as united or, and they're not able to come together to make a better long-term decision. Well, it's interesting that you say that because it doesn't just apply to issues. It applies to collective bargaining negotiations, for example. Like, you know, you might have some players that's ready to hold out for the whole year. You might have another player that's saying, man, we got to get this done now. Hell with this. I need this money. I need to feed my family. I don't have your money. Let's get it done. So if you have a situation where if you're in the NBA and you got 450 plus players, and if you're the National Football League and you got 1,600 plus players, but you only got 10 to 20 players that are taken care of to the point where financially they can survive being out of the game for a year and all of that other stuff, you got a problem on your hands because the rest of them can't. And as a result, since they make up the body uh, of players in, in terms terms of a union or beyond you can't do but so much i mean you're not gonna have everybody on the same page it doesn't work that way which is by the way why i don't believe what the morris smith the executive director for the players association brought up when he tried to proclaim he believes there's going to be a work stoppage in 2021 oh please if it's going to be a work stoppage it's going to be because of the owners it ain't going to be because of the players because the vast majority of players are going to need their money let's just call it what it is Exactly. And what do you think could aid that? What do you think could aid this to, you know, for them to whatever could happen to, to aid this, to help it? Aid what? What, what, what um, What's your definition of aid to aid? What's your conclusion? In other words, what you're trying to what are you trying to get at? The unity between them, to, to them to come together better, is it? Just- well, I'm saying they could come together better, bro. But if I'm making a million and you only making 50,000, you and I can think alike. The problem is our money ain't alike. Remember, you know, you know, you know that song by by Jay Z, "Already Home." Uh, I don't. He's got a he's got a line he's got a line a verse in there where he says, "And really, the fact is, we not in the same bracket, not in the same <laughs> league. Don't shoot at the same basket. Don't pay the same taxes. You understand yeah. what I'm saying? It's yeah, a different yeah, yeah, ball yeah. game. Definitely. So you know, it's, it's like it, you can think the same, but in the end, you ain't because okay. some people got it like that and some people don't. Yeah. That's where the lack of an accord comes into play. If you you could be like minded, but you don't have the same cushion. If I fall, if I if I fall on the steps, but it's it's three damn cushions or a net that's gonna cushion my fall. That's entirely that's entirely different than falling on a board full of needles. Yeah, definitely. I get. It's like the show uh, the show Ballers. You watch that. No, um, uh, sometimes, 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 but I watch yeah. it for different, I watch it for different reasons than the issues and I'll just leave it at that. Sergio, I got to run, man. I appreciate the call. Thank you so much. 866-729-ESPN. That's 866-729-3776. More of your calls in a minute. It's the Stephen A. Smith Show, ESPN Radio. Okay, keep your eyes closed. Okay. I want to show you my first ever painting. Mm, all right. Okay. Open your eyes. Oh, that's a lot of colors mm-hmm. <laughs> and shades. So be honest. What do you think? Well, uh, I like how if you switch to Geico, you could save hundreds of dollars on car insurance. Oh, yeah, that's that's true. Yeah. Here, why don't I hold your paintbrush while you call them? Geico, because saving 15% or more on car insurance is always a great answer. Guess what? You're in the middle of the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. Damn it, I mean it! In just a few minutes... I'll transition to Mello, CP3, New York, L.A., Houston, and I'll get into the Los Angeles Lakers as well because there's something percolating with the Lakers that I need all of you to know, that I need you to understand. I'll get to that in just a few minutes right here on the Stephen A. Smith Show, ESPN Radio. Until then, let me get back to it. Let's go to Jeremy in L.A. You're live with Stephen A. What's up, Jeremy? How are you? What's going on, Stephen A.? I'm good. You know, I got I got a couple of things I want to say. First, uh, in regards to Kevin Durant uh, saying that he doesn't want to go to the White House, I'm full of support of that. You know, I don't agree with uh, the administration. Uh, I was in the Army, and I can't stand to see someone like that as my uh, commander-in-chief in this day and age. Uh, the only way, personally, I would say I would go is if underneath I had on an impeached Trump shirt in the middle of the whole press conference there, they would just you know, take off whatever cover they had and just reveal that just to make a big stink. The second thing, really, I wanted to dig in on was that you had a couple of callers over the last few weeks that are just categorically and historically wrong about some things. You had 
one guy come on and say that Robert E. Lee wasn't a slave owner. Robert E. Lee had slaves upon his exit from West Point in 1829 and by his own son's admittance had uh, freed them by yeah, but 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 yeah, come on, man. Most of my listeners ain't trying to hear that. I mean, I know that you. We don't need a history lesson. I get it. I appreciate it. I totally understand what you're coming from. But don't waste the short, valuable minutes that you have trying to give folks a history lesson on Robert E. Lee. Oh, yeah. Damn it it, 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 it ain't a priority. Yeah. Go ahead. No, true, 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 true. And this just the other thing is like there was this guy that came on a couple weeks calling everybody snowflakes or wanted to take down statues and everything. I'm like. Don't you know that that's as an as a prior service member? Why are we putting up statues to honor people that were fighting against our nation? That I don't get. And even well, because American, even, because listen, I appreciate the call, but here's the bottom line: eventually, they did things that were positive. Obviously, they did things that weren't not great. Look at the other story that's percolating in Boston. You've got the CEO for the Boston Red Sox that once Yorkie Way renamed, which is the street that goes into Fenway Park where they play because Mr. Tom Yorkie, who used to own the team from 1933 to 1976, uh, was against the segregation in terms of his team. Uh, Jackie Robinson integrated the sport of Major League Baseball in 1947. The Red Sox, the Boston Red Sox, were the very last team in Major League Baseball to integrate. They brought on some dude, Pump C. Green. That was their first play. He was in 1959. He came on board. It was two years after Jackie Robinson retired. That's when Yorkie and those boys were willing to entertain desegregating his Major League Baseball roster. And then after that, it was the busing situation where laws were enacted in 1965 to desegregate the public schools in Boston and still in the 70s, well into the 80s, the city of Boston was still fighting that in large part. And then you fast forward to 2017 and Adam Jones is talking about being at Fenway Park and how racial epithets were thrown in his direction and CeCe Sabathia for the New York Yankees was talking about how it's, it, it, it was typical in Boston. And I wasn't a surprise to any player. And now there's only 61 black players, 7.1%. They amount to a major league baseball. In 2017, we were having this conversation just months ago. And in fairness to the city of Boston, they're saying, excuse me, why are everybody highlighting us? Like we're the worst city in America. There's plenty of cities worse than us. That's what they're saying. So now there's a debate ongoing about whether or not Yorkie Way needs to be renamed. CEO wants to rename it Big Poppy, David Ortiz way. Because of the African-Americans and Dominican Republics, per- Republicans that, that have been a part of that franchise for years. This subject's not going away because these issues won't go away. And if you really, really, really want to be honest about it, ladies and gentlemen, one of the biggest reasons that Barack Obama was voted into the presidency receiving over 69 million votes is because you had a plethora of white Americans who are determined and hell-bent on getting beyond these points. So if everybody feels that way, and if everybody in America just wants to go on with their lives and not be dragged down into the muck and mire of issues like this, how the hell did we as a nation allow an individual, not as politics, not as policies, How did we allow that particular individual to get in the office conducting himself as a human being and an adult the way he was supposed to? Once upon a time, I mean, listen, ladies and gentlemen, remember that presidential candidate, Gary Hart, that didn't capture the presidency because you saw him on a boat with a mistress or something like that? You know how many candidates had to back out because of the things that they said? or salacious behavior as individuals they may have engaged in. Yet all of that was ignored this go-round. And you're wondering why chickens have now come home to roost. Because a legitimate argument that could be made, that when you talk about the morals that exist in this country, and what we mandated and demanded from our leaders, we ignored all of that. All of it. For this particular individual. 
That's why you saw Kyle Long. That's why you heard Chris Long. That's why you've heard Kevin Durant. That's why you've heard uh, uh, LeBron James. That's why you're going to hear much more. You think it's bad now. Wait till the damn NBA season starts. This ain't football, ladies and gentlemen. The National Football League, you got contracts that could be cut, minimized. Guys could get flat out waived or cut, have their money restructured and all of this other stuff. Ain't guaranteed contracts in the NFL. The owners and the commissioner rule that league. The NBA is a player's league. What you going to do, LeBron James? He's worth a billion. What you going to do with Kevin Durant? He's damn near worth a half billion. What you going to do with a whole bunch of players? Ladies and gentlemen, do you know that Chris Paul told Steve Ballmer and the Clippers, no, I'm not taking your money. They were going to give Chris Paul a five-year, 200, I think it's like 205 or $207 million. I'm a huge fan of Doc Rivers. I'm very, very fond of this man as a coach. I got to tell you something. It's impossible that he's not in trouble. It's impossible that he's not in trouble. If I'm a billionaire and I got a dude that won't take $200 million of my money to stay living in L.A., Los Angeles, California, City of Angels, Hollywood, Tinseltown, the warm weather, the palm trees, and everything else in between, and he's making $200 million, and he says no. I'm looking at my coach. What's the problem? What's going on? What what am I missing? What the hell is going on here? One point is that Chris Chris Paul obviously could afford to take that position. The other part is why he would feel the need to. That, my friends, is a different subject that does not involve President Trump at all. That involves Doc Rivers, Steve Ballmer, and the Los Angeles Clippers. And inevitably, it will all serve to involve the Los Angeles Lakers the Houston Rockets, and the New York Knicks, too. I'll explain exactly what I mean up next. You are listening live to the Stephen A. Smith Show, ESPN Radio. You're listening to the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. I'm satisfied. Outstanding. Ow. Yeah, girl, you knock me out. See, that's some old music. Y'all don't understand stuff like that. You young whippersnappers out there. You just don't know music when it's music. All these damn lyrics. I don't even understand what half these rappers saying in this day and age. That's just me. That's just me. Welcome back to the Stephen A. Smith Show, ESPN Radio. I told y'all I was going to get into this. And let me just break this down. You know, we, 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 you got people reporting on things and people aren't heavily on, on in it, but... I think today is appropriate to bring up this stuff because, and I'll get into it a bit heavier in hour number two, but it's important to get into it because with us, with Vegas putting the odds out about who's going to be league MVP in the NBA this year, I think it's going to be Kawhi Leonard. They got Russell Westbrook 7-2 odds. Um, With the Los Angeles Lakers shaving about $50 million plus off their cap, thereby putting them in position to get two marquee free agents. With Russell Westbrook refusing to sign his Supermax five-year, $217 million extension that's on the table from Sam Presti and the Oklahoma City Thunder. Ladies and gentlemen, it's one of those situations where it is not beyond the realm of comprehension that by this time next year, Paul George and either Russell Westbrook or LeBron James are wearing Los Angeles Laker uniforms. I mean, it's that serious. It's that serious. We all know that LeBron James is keeping his options open. He always does. That's a given. But Russell Westbrook, former star at UCLA, reigning league MVP, big-time clear superstar in the NBA, 
Ladies and gentlemen, I got some news for you. I wouldn't rule out anything right now. He hasn't signed it yet. Got till the beginning of the season to sign it. Who knows what he's going to do? We all know Paul George wants to be here in L.A. That's relevant. Here's what is also relevant. I can't believe Chris Paul is gone. And obviously I've had a lot of personal things going on in my life and a lot of other things that I've been dealing with. And, you know, there's other folks jobs to lock in. I used to be that beat writer. I used to be that NBA insider that was on the beat. I still have my sources and context, but I don't, I host two shows. I don't have to do that anymore. So I don't have to be the first to find out every little, every little thing. Well, is sensational. Let him do it. Brian Windhorst and, 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 and Ramona Shelburne and others are great. Let them do it. I did that for 17 years. I don't feel like doing that no more. But when it falls in my lap, I have to do it. And ladies and gentlemen, here's the reality. The Los Angeles Clippers wanted Chris Paul back desperately. Steve Ballmer wanted him back. This questions as to whether or not Doc Rivers did. The relationship with CP3 was not great. If you recall around this time last year, Kevin Durant, and Kevin Durant could get mad at me all he wants to. Yes, I got sources in his camp still. I have people close to CP3 still. I'm always have folks. And here's what I was told. Kevin Durant met with the Clippers as a courtesy had no intentions of ever coming to the Clippers. Knew that Chris Paul and Blake Griffin didn't have the greatest relationship. That him and DeAndre Jordan butted heads from time to time. And didn't want any part of it. So he didn't want to come to L.A. But Doc Rivers with Ballmer, with Blake Griffin and them, met with Kevin Durant anyway. Chris Ball was out of the country. He didn't show up because he's close with Kevin Durant. I'm telling you what I know from Chris Paul's people. He's close with Kevin Durant and made it very, very clear. He knew that Kevin Durant wasn't coming. You got a lot of people that talk about how Doc and the crew did not like that. And when it comes to CP3, CP3 and Doc were basically on the outs ever since that time. Because he felt CP3 should have been there for that meeting. Last year was touch and go up and down. Everybody knows Austin Rivers is a good kid, decent player, ain't CP3. The Los Angeles Clippers had an opportunity to acquire Carmelo Anthony. Carmelo Anthony, I'm telling you this, would have waived his no-trade clause to come to the Clippers. For some reason, Doc Rivers then then pulled the trigger because of Austin Rivers, which is something I reported months ago. CP3 and Carmelo are like brothers. You bring Carmelo to town, you might have had a shot to get LeBron. You just never know. Didn't happen. That's strike two with CP3. And in the end, that's all the strikes you needed. Because CP3 was fully aware of the fact that the Clippers were willing to give him in excess of $200 million. And at age 32, approaching the last year of his deal, CP3 turned down over $200 million. And in the process, wasn't even talking to Doc Rivers. And even after he decided to go to Houston, still met recently with Ballmer for dinner. This I know through CP3's folks. 
but not Doc Rivers. So when you couple that and all that transpired with the fact that Jerry West is now in Los Angeles, one would surmise Doc Rivers is in a world of trouble. This year has to be successful in some capacity. You ain't got to beat Golden State, but you better have a damn good season. And Jerry West doesn't have to say anything. Jerry West is almost 80 years old, ladies and gentlemen. Jerry West ain't interested in talking. Jerry West ain't interested in titles. Jerry West is interested in making decisions, being the foremost authority on basketball decisions, and ultimately getting paid. That's it. And you know what else Jerry West is interested in, ladies and gentlemen? More so than anything else that you can think about? What Jerry West is interested in more than anything is making sure that he builds a foundation for the Los Angeles Clippers that even eclipses that of the Los Angeles Lakers. In other words, Jerry West, regardless of how you slice it, friendly, respectfully, or otherwise, is in direct competition with Irvin Magic Johnson for supremacy in Los Angeles. Do y'all hear what I'm saying to y'all? Do you get how this is breaking down? If you don't, don't worry. I got more to tell you, especially as it pertains to Carmelo Anthony. You're listening live to the Stephen A. Smith Show, ESPN Radio, hour number two with so much more coming up next. That's just a sample of what you'll hear on the Stephen A. Smith Show. Weekdays at 1 p.m. Eastern on Sirius XM Channel 80 and the ESPN app. This this is the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. I'm Stephen A. Hour number two for the Stephen A. Smith Show here with you. For the next hour or so, over the airways of ESPN Radio, Sirius XM, Channel Lady. Number to call up as always is 866-729-ESPN. That's 866-729-3776. Let me continue on this basketball topic before I transition back to Kevin Durant and what he had to say about our president, um, along with a couple of other things. Here's the deal. That's the situation with Doc Rivers and the Los Angeles Clippers. Chris Paul walked away from $200 million at age 32 in the last year of a contract because he didn't want to play for Doc Rivers. That's one of the reasons. Now, I'm a fan of Doc's. I think he's a big-time motivator. I think he's a champion as a coach. But those things can't go unmentioned. And I think Ballmer taking the presidency away from him, giving it to Lawrence Frank, who recognized he wasn't going to be a head coach anymore in all probability, decided to go upstairs to the front office. Smart move on Lawrence Frank's part. Man works hard, studies. I don't know if he's a coach. I think he's an executive. I know he's knowledgeable about the game of basketball. Be interested to see the job that he does. But Jerry West is the name you can't ignore. Ladies and gentlemen, understand something right now. Yes, I'm on the record saying that Jerry West doesn't deserve to be the silhouette anymore. By the way, Jerry West feels that way too. Jerry West is one of the great basketball players in NBA history, one of the great basketball minds in history. I don't just respect the man. I revere him as a basketball mind. He's that lethal. He's that special. And that's a big-time pickup by Steve Ballmer to get him on board. But it's going to be real interesting. Because let me tell you something. Jerry West played a role in getting Kevin Durant to Golden State. Jerry West was the man who got Shaquille O'Neal to Los Angeles. Could Jerry West pull off something to get somebody here in Los Angeles for the Clippers? Which brings us to the Los Angeles Lakers. See, ladies and gentlemen, Magic Johnson is one key name in all of this because $50 million is going to be shaved off their cap. And there's three marquee free agents that are expected to be available next summer. At least two in Paul George and LeBron James, possibly a third in Russell Westbrook. Russell Westbrook started UCLA. George is from Palmdale out here. 
if both of them could be free agents together and both of them love playing with one another in Oklahoma City this year, who's to say they're not going to depart and come to Los Angeles? And if one of them doesn't come, who's to say that it's not so the other can join LeBron James? But can Magic out-recruit Jerry West? Or vice versa? Can Jerry West out-recruit Magic? Remains to be seen. Magic has the Laker brand waiting, you know, buffering his stature. Not just his greatness, but also the Laker brand, whereas Jerry West doesn't have that, but Jerry West is Jerry West. New Arena, get the hell out of the Staples Center. Get your own palace to play in. Establish your own identity. A different one that Donald Sterling contaminated and sullied for years. Who knows what you could do if you're Steve Ballmer with Jerry West. It remains to be seen. But the key name in all of this is Lonzo Ball. Because if Lonzo Ball ends up being that dude, that dude who can be a legit point guard, who legitimately makes others better, and he shows himself that he's ready for this level, Ladies and gentlemen, we could be in the throes of something very, very special in Los Angeles. Now, if you're the New York Knicks, a little bit different because Mello wants out and Mello wants to leave. And the question really in your mind should be, what are you going to get for him? You're not moving Porzingis for Kyrie Irving. You'd move Mello in a heartbeat for Kyrie Irving. Cleveland's got to be willing to take it. If you're the New York Knicks, what can you do to convince them? Not just them, another team, you got to convince Melo because Melo doesn't want to wave his no-trade clause for Cleveland because he wants to go to Houston with CP3. Well, why would he want to do that? Could it be that both he and CP3 are both represented by CAA? Could it, be, could it be that they believe that playing together will ensure in all likelihood that in concert with James Harden, because that is his team, it ain't CP3's team, wouldn't be Melo's team. James Harden is the man on the Houston Rockets. Could it be that playing together or playing as a threesome, they have the confidence to believe that they can at least get to the Western Conference Finals? And if that happens, it will ensure that both of them get their money from the Rockets in a tax-free state in terms of state income taxes that is Texas and Houston specifically? Is that possible? These are all the things that's going on. Stay tuned, ladies and gentlemen. This is getting very, very interesting. And everybody keeps talking about LeBron James. To me, if LeBron James is one, Russell Westbrook is 1A. Russell Westbrook potentially available on the open market? Are you kidding me? Do you know how special that would be? And this is Russell Westbrook we're talking about here. So if he don't mind playing in Oklahoma City, that means he wouldn't mind playing for the Lakers or the Clippers. By the way, from what I'm told, if Ballmer had gotten Chris Paul to take the $200 million, Blake Griffin was gone. Because Chris Paul was obviously preferred. But since Chris Paul elected to leave and told them so, keeping Blake Griffin on board obviously wasn't a problem. The interesting part about it is this. For all those who say, oh, you know, people complain about Doc Rivers. There's problems about Doc Rivers. That might be true. Doc Rivers is somebody you can complain about from time to time now because he's fiery and he's demanding. But Blake Griffin didn't seem upset that Chris Paul was gone. Neither did DeAndre. Meanwhile, you got cats along with CP3 and even J.J. Reddick to a lesser degree that had their complaints about their coach. Interesting times in L.A. Interesting times. Nothing compares to how interesting it will be in October, though, when the Dodgers are in the playoffs, the Rams are, and the Chargers are playing NFL football, USC is playing college football, and Lonzo Ball and his career with the Los Angeles Lakers get started. It's going to be wild in Los Angeles. Not so much in New York. 866-729-ESPN. Back to the phones we go. LJ in Houston, talk to me. Stephen A., how's it going, man? 
I'm good, man. Thank you for calling. Talk to me. Uh, that scenario that you threw out, the fact that Russell Westbrook could end up with the Lakers with Paul George and possibly LeBron, I don't really see no, no, LeBron. No, 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 no. That's not what I said. I said the Lakers will have money to get two of the three. So I'm not okay. talking about the three-headed monster. I'm saying if you're the Lakers, you're in position to potentially have Paul George with LeBron or Paul George with Russell. Two okay. of the three. That's what I okay. see. Go ahead. I see that one. I see Paul George and Russell more than I see LeBron playing with Russell. But who is to say that Russell won't go to the Clippers? How we know Jerry West won't recruit Russell Westbrook what did I just, to the Clippers? What did I, what did I just say? I just said that Russell Westbrook, the type of dude, if you don't mind playing in Oklahoma City, you damn sure ain't going to mind playing in L.A., whether it's with the Clippers or the Lakers. Yeah, That's what but, I said. Yeah, but like you said, they need to get out that building, get their own building, get their own identity, get away from the Lakers, and then have a better shot of yeah. getting their brand better. But I have one scenario I want to throw at you before I go. Sure. If LeBron goes to the West and Carmelo ends up with the Rockets, do you think that they will force the commissioner's hand to change the playoff format to, to top 16 since the West will be top heavy instead of the I, East. I, I wouldn't rule it out. I wouldn't rule it out. Okay. I mean, they, 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 they poo-poo that, but it, the commissioner has admitted that it's crossed his mind from time to time. And if something like that happened where LeBron and Melo all ended up out West, I wouldn't blame them. Yeah, I think I it's going to happen. I think, I think LeBron's setting it up for that to happen. That was my question, well, though. Yeah, have a nice day. I appreciate the call. 866-729-ESPN. It's 866-729-3776. Back with more of your phone calls in a minute. We're talking NBA. We're talking Durant, President Trump. By the way, Steve Bannon fired as an advisor to the president a few hours ago. Lots of stuff to get into because who knows? LeBron and Kevin Durant might have something to say about that too, the way things are going. You're listening live to Stephen A. Smith Show, ESPN Radio. You're listening to the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. Back to the phones we go right here live on the Stephen A. Smith Show, ESPN Radio, looking to close out the week very, very strongly. Remember, preseason action is stepping up. The NFL season is drawing near, along with the college football season, by the way. I'm looking forward to that as well. I'm looking forward to Alabama, Ohio State, USC, Florida State, Alabama, open the season up against one another. Can't wait for that matchup. And Atlanta, Georgia, I might go to that game. Definitely, I can't miss USC Texas this year either. I'm looking forward to that too. Lots of stuff to get into, uh, but we will. Right here at Stephen A. Smith Show, ESPN Radio. Let's go to Mike in Queens. You're live with Stephen A. What's up, Mike? What's going on? What's up, Stephen A.? Talk to me, man. Listen, I, I just don't see Russell Westbrook going to L.A. Obviously, he's from the area, but you really could see him playing off the ball with Lonzo there? Well, listen, first of all, I think anything's possible because Russell Westbrook, you, you think about it. You're going you're gonna to tell Russell Westbrook, look, man, we want, you, we want you to score. We want him to handle the ball. We want you to shoot 25 times and try to average 30. You think Russell Westbrook's going to be insulted by that? Yeah, but you said he would also be going with either LeBron or Paul George. Like, there's only so be, much to go around, right? He wouldn't be, be that be main guy trying to score. Brandon That's Ingram's true. already there. Yeah, but but once you got your money, why do you care? Because I think Russ wants more than money. I think he's trying to win championships. Well, I don't think anybody wants just the money. They all trying to win. But part of trying to win is trying to do things a little bit differently than you've been doing. Last time I checked, Russell Westbrook doesn't have a championship on his resume, not to mention the fact that I don't think he can rule out anything. Listen, here's the reason we asked the question. There has been a, a five-year Supermax $217 million contract extension on the table for Russell Westbrook for months, and he hasn't signed it. That's why we're asking. Have a nice day. Let's go to Nathan in New Jersey. You're live with Stephen A. What's going on, Nathan? How are you, man? How's it going, Stephen A., my brother, man? I'm doing all right. Um, listen, I just want to get two points on that. Sorry, you want to speak in my bad, bro? I just want to get go two ahead. points on the Rams real quick. Yeah. So um, I want to talk a little bit about Aaron Donald. I love the guy. Dude's a beast. Like, hands down, one of the best defensive players in the league. And uh, <clears throat> I just want to say, so – if the Rams pay all that money, can they pay players like Tremaine? You got your know, Alec Ogletrees. You got – like our defense is stacked, but I don't want to break the bank just paying one player, you know? 
Well, you don't want to press the bank, break the bank playing just one player. But at the same time, you don't want your best player to just walk out the door on you. Not that he can because he's still under contract, which is why he would have to sit out the season if he didn't play unless the Rams traded him because he doesn't have a right to just get up and go somewhere else because he's not a free agent. But the reality is clear. The Fletcher Cox, the Vaughn Millers, the J.J. Watts of the world, the list goes on and on. You see these boys getting paid, and you're Aaron Donald, and you're recognized one of the best in the game. Plus, you have youth on your side. Why can't you sit up there and demand that you get compensated and taken care of like the others have? The Rams should have to figure that out. What did you say? I mean, Les Need was on the record last month, just a, a couple of weeks ago, talking about how, you know, re-signing Aaron Donald is a priority. Quote, the goal is still the same. Make Aaron a Ram for a long, long time. So that didn't change at all. I definitely respect Aaron as a human being. I respect the process. Now, this is a guy that's under contract. This is a guy, and it is Aaron Donald. He's under contract for $1.8 million this year and $6.9 million next year. They could franchise tag him in 2019 and 2020, which means he still wouldn't be able to go anywhere. And that means it'll be a long time before he can negotiate with any other team. But at the same time, he's talking about how physical the sport is, what sacrifices that he's making. And let's take into account who he's making those sacrifices for, man. These are the Rams. No, I feel you, man. I feel you. I feel you. Like, I'm a long-time Rams fan. And, like, Pay this man. I get it. And I, I want to see this man right, bro. You feel me? Like Yes. Um, <laughs> And I, I'm 100% on that, man. Like, if we can get it done sooner, like, we're, we're like. All I'm trying to say to you is this. Let me ask you this question. Let me ask you this question. Was the Rams offense or defense the problem last year? Offense, man. Come on. Thank you. Offense. We're dead last in points, loud yardage, passing attack, second to last in a run attack. Come on now. Your defense was respectable. Think about what they had to work with. And I understand that you that you got Quinn and a few other cats, but who's the best on your defense? Donald, hands down, take man. Care, take, take, listen, take, care of fire, man. take care of this man. Take care of him. Aaron Donald better damn well get his money. Take care of him. Figure out everything else. Appreciate the call. Tired of all of this nonsense. I'm not sitting up there and telling you you cripple your team because of him. But in the same breath, just because you have leverage doesn't mean you exercise it all the damn time when your team is stunk. And this dude goes out there and performs for you. Three consecutive years as a pro bowler. Got youth and speed and quickness and athleticism on his side and actually doesn't mind being a part of your organization for years to come knowing you stink and you're going to give him a hard time? Give him his damn money. Mike in Denver, you're live with Stephen A. What's up, big baby? What's going on? How you doing, man? I mean, talk to me, bro. Hey, man, yeah, I just want to touch on a few things real quick. Uh, first of all, I pretty appreciate how you and uh, Max handled the wheel this morning. You know, like you say, whether you're right or wrong, y'all always get to the point on that. That was beautiful. And then, you know, you're giving out some good information on the NBA right now. But the other thing is that Boston situation you was talking about earlier, you know. Yep. I, ex- I experienced that. I ain't never shared this with you, though. But in 1981, man, I played with the number one high school team in the nation, Dunbar High School in D.C., Okay. Yeah, the number one, number one high school player in the country. We know, we know all Jones. about Dunbar, bro. Reggie Williams yeah, but, and Georgetown and all of those boys. Nah, oh, not the, a few not the one Dunbar. in Baltimore. Not the one in Baltimore. The one in oh. D.C. Stephen. Okay, okay. You Go know, ahead. Well, 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 <clears throat> you can check it out. A guy named Anthony Red Jones who ended up going to Georgetown with Patrick Ewing, and we was gonna play Cambridge Ridge and Latin when Pat Ewing was up there, and um, we couldn't play. We was gonna play him at the Boston Garden, and we couldn't play because of the race riots. And, man, that was a shame. Here it is. This was 1981, and they still had that mess going on. And, you know, that's that's a shame. Well, that's what and you alluded like, to. You alluded to the whole busing issue where it was a, it was, it was le- legislators made it illegal uh, to segregate the public schools. This is, in 19, this is in the 1970s. And from 1974 to 1988, the city of Boston was still in an uproar, periodically having riots because you had an abundance of people there who did not want to desegregate schools. And to this very day, the, the city of Boston is considered one of the more segregated cities in the country. Exactly. And like I said, man, that was a real hurtful thing for us, man, because we wanted that game so bad, you know. We were featuring like two of the top players in the country that year, you know, with Pat Ewan playing for them and Ramiro Robinson being a freshman at that time. 
Robinson, really for that those, game. Maril Robinson, for those who don't know, ultimately ended up going to Michigan and 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 helping them uh, to a national championship, playing for Fish, if I remember correctly. Am I right? Yeah, co- correct. And like I All said, right. you know, man, in '81, I'm saying, you know, Dunbar High School in DC. You know, we was we was we was from preseason to the last game of the season. We ended up Got losing it. to the Master in the city title game, but. Man, you had a pretty uh, awesome show today, man. I'm going to get back with you Monday. Man, keep doing your Talk thing, to you later. man. Thanks a lot, bro. Right. Appreciate you, man. No doubt. 866-729-ESPN. More of your calls in a minute. We'll continue talking about this. We'll revisit the topic of conversation you just brought up in terms of Boston. And also, I'm going to get into a few other items as well. The NFL, the NFLPA going at it. And then the NFL Players Association talking about there's going to be a work stoppage by 2021 in all likelihood. I don't believe that for one second. I'll explain why when we return. It's the Stephen A. Smith Show on ESPN Radio. You're listening to Love Advice with Leanne. Caller, you're on the air. Uh, Hi, Leanne. Long-time listener, first-time caller. (laughs) Why, in your professional opinion, do you never take my calls off the air? Is this Carl? Yep, it's Carl. I mean, we had a few dates. Everything was great, I thought. uh... Well, you know... When you switch to GEICO, you could save a lot of money on car insurance. Okay, awesome. You should call them. I will. GEICO, because saving 15% or more on car insurance is always a great answer. Guess what? You're in the middle of the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. Damn it, I mean it! Let me veer off the reservation for just a second here, please, today, uh, by bringing this up. if, If there are moments in time where when you do hear the word assault and you do hear the word charges, you should pause and not jump to conclusions. And ladies and gentlemen, I would make the argument that as it pertains to Raiders cornerback Sean Smith, that's exactly what we do. See, we hear that he beat up somebody and, and, and stomped on the dude's head. And certainly, listen, this is Walt Disney. This is ESPN. We ain't encouraging violence of any sort. And certainly stomping on somebody's head is definitely extreme. All of that's true. All of that's true. And looked in that regard, I understand. But when I heard the story about this cat, Sean Smith, quarterback for the Los Angeles Regulars, in his second year, I heard his attorney talking about how he maintains his innocence and he will not plead guilty. The plan, his attorney, Daniel Rosenberg, said is to fight the charge all the way through. Guess what, ladies and gentlemen? That's not the reason I'm asking y'all to pause. Hear me out. Hear me out. This man, Oakland Raiders cornerback Sean Smith, arrested Thursday, facing felony assault charges. Do you know why he was arrested? For beating up his sister's boyfriend. Do you know what that makes me think, ladies and gentlemen? Why did he feel the need to beat up his sister's boyfriend? See, at some point in time, we can't have it both ways now. You know, listen, we live in a society where it has been proven that more than 85% of the cases of domestic violence are where women are victims. Okay. And we have no clue whatsoever what happened. But why is this man, who is an NFL player, who knows that the slightest thing could have him in the newspapers because he's a part of the police blotter, why would he jeopardize himself By beating a man up and stomping on his head. And that man happens to be his sister's boyfriend. Why? I want to know the answer to that question. And God forbid, because we don't know. And again, I'm not, I don't want to advocate violence, especially damn near killing somebody or anything like that. We don't want to do that. But I got to admit to you, I would like to know why he beat up his sister's boyfriend. You're an NFL player. 
Anything you do can put you at the mercy of Roger Goodell. Why are you in the news for beating up your sister's boyfriend? Because in the interest of full disclosure, you can get it twisted all you want to about what you think this is, meaning Stephen A. Smith. And, but, but have I had to put my hands on a man before because of my sisters? Yes. Do I know many men who have? Yes. And I don't know a man that has ever felt the need to apologize for putting his hands on another man over his sister. I don't know what happened here. But just as an outsider contemplating the potential of what may have transpired, usually a dude doesn't feel the need to put his hands on another dude over his sister. Unless that dude did something to his sister. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. 866 ESPN. Back to the phones we go. Jay and Callie, you're live with Stephen A. What's up, Jay? Hey, what's going on, Stephen A.? I totally agree with you, man. I just want to say before I say my point, it, I, we don't know what he did. But it's some things when it comes to my mama, my sister, my yeah. any of the females in my family. That's right. It's when it comes to female that's... family members, tell them, tell them, Jay, yeah. preach it, preach it, Jay. Say yeah. it, go ahead, complete your Some things that's worth dying for, and some things that's worth going to jail for. So I'm gonna leave it at that because we don't know what happened. We don't but know what happened, time. but 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 what I'm saying, Jay, is this: a dude that playing in the NFL with the commissioner yeah. that is Roger Goodell, that's damn near ready to suspend you for having bad breath. Suddenly right. you gonna get you gonna put your hand on your sister's boyfriend. There's yeah. something that's wrong with that picture. Yeah, no, it, it's everything right with that picture. No, no okay, I'm talking about something, something wrong with the picture in terms of the dude, not Sean Smith. Right, 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 right. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, but I, I hear you. I hear you exactly, Stephen. I just want right. to say, uh, by the way, first take was epic this morning too. I loved it. Um, Thank you. But. Uh, I wanted to say that I think that, uh, and I don't always mean to be the eyeball, but I think that the people saying that they didn't want to go to the White House, I think if you don't agree with Trump, that you should go, because then that way you get to speak your voice. And I also want to say, uh, and I'll listen to you off the air, or, or, or on the radio, Steve, after I say this, I want to hang up. But I also want to say, I, I, I don't understand why it's only the black athlete or the black reporter or, or uh, uh, that's speaking out on these things. Well, that's not, that, that's, the that last part's I, not that, that's part's not accurate, Jay. There's a, there, there's reporters of all ethnicities that have been speaking on this issue as it pertained to the the the, the athlete. Well, Chris Long uh, spoke out yesterday. He was there with uh, uh, Malcolm Jenkins for the Philadelphia Eagles, and I'm sure there will be others. But I also would like to point this out. Once upon a time, I felt the exact same way that you did. I would have gone to the White House if invited, just because of the point that you made. But that's when it was a political thing. Now that we've watched how this man has conducted himself as an adult right. and as a man and as the leader of the free world, I find it unacceptable because of his personal behavior, absolutely having nothing to do with politics. I can talk to you and, and hope that your heightened level of sensitivity comes our way as it pertains to politics and policy. But when it comes right. to just knowing how to act like a damn adult, look, if you're 71 years old and you're still a child, ain't no hope for you. I so do you think time. that Kevin Durant is declining to go and people that would decline to go, do you think that it's the president, uh, his his demeanor I th- and I think, I think I think it's I think it's his personal behavior. I don't think it's policy. Gotcha. I don't think it's the fact. I, I listen. If John Kasich, if Marco Rubio, if 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 if, if you know uh, uh, you know uh, Carla Fiorini, a uh, uh, Jeb Bush, uh, a host of other folks, I think if if they got invited to the White House by those individuals. I think if they got invited to the, by the White House by past administrations, Barack Obama, George W. Bush, Bill Clinton, George H.W. Bush, I think they would go. 
I think the fact, right. I don't think their issue is with the politics. A matter of fact, Kevin meant Kevin Durant and LeBron James mentioned nothing about politics. They recognize there's hundreds of millions of people who are relatively conservative and think a bit differently than they do. They can respect that. What they can't respect is the insensitivity. It's the belligerence. It's the petulance. They can't respect the, the divisiveness. The fact that you could see neo-Nazis marching in the streets preaching against Jews and blacks and everybody who's non-white and non-Christian and being so divisive in a society that's supposed to be a gorgeous mosaic. I think these guys have a big problem with that, and that is what they're speaking about, and that is why I 1,000% support them on that. Are you still there, Stephen A.? I'm right here. Real quick. Go ahead. Oh, uh, and, and I just want to say real fast, I called in a week or so ago with some uh, with some problems with Kaepernick. I want to reserve my comments because of where it is right now. I don't want to say I take back how I feel, but well, I'm talk- loving where where it's at. I got so, you. So let's talk that. about that at a later date. We ain't going nowhere. You got plenty of time to call back about that, Jay. Ain't no problem. Appreciate the call, man. 866-729-ESPN. Your call is to close out the show in a minute with Stephen A. on ESPN Radio. You're listening to the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. So good to me. I can't help it. Let me tell you where I'm. Excuse me. What's your name? Whoa! <laughs> my voice is scratchy a little bit, but my sister Calm is listening. My sister Calm is looking just as good as she wants to look. That's right, I say that. My sister looks good. She needs to stop smoking, though. I'm going to be putting, I'm going to just put it out there. I don't want the tobacco industry speaking up against me. My sister Carmen, Carmen Jackson, smokes too much, and I want her to stop. That's right, I said it. Carmen, if you're listening, baby girl, I got the ultimate thing that's going to make you stop. Because Carmen, my sister Carmen, can sing, you know. And she wants to be, yeah, you know, she does, she's a school teacher, but she wants to sing because she can sing. Carmen, if you don't stop smoking, your voice is going to sound like mine. <laughs> I bet you that's in setup. I bet you that's in setup. 866-729-ESPN. Back to the phones we go before we get on out of here. JP in Brooklyn, real quick. You're live with Stephen A. Go ahead, buddy. Thanks for having me, Stephen. Um, look, you brought up a couple of uh, interesting topics listen to the show, and I have to chime in on. Uh, the first one of them that touched me uh, was um, the question you asked about the brother the, uh, who, who got into a fight with his sister's uh, Yes, yes, Sean Smith. Sean Smith for the Raiders. Yes. Sean Smith. His presence alone should stop any type of additional harm he may have or may have not done to that sister. Now, him going that far, whatever he gets, he deserves. He has no business putting domestic violence within, you know, family uh, men on men, it could be men on women. All right, stop right there, stop right there, stop right, stop right there. We got your point, but what I'm saying to you is this. Nobody's advocating violence here. What I'm saying is that it wasn't that he was there. It seemed to be a situation where he was retaliating, meaning something had happened to his sister. We don't know what, but something had happened to his sister. That's what seems to be the case. Go ahead. Life experience has taught me to always rebuke that behavior. Okay, no problem. What's your second point? I got it. We got your point because we're running out of time. So go ahead and make your second point. Okay. Um, The NBA uh, movements, it's a domino effect. Your point that you brought up about Doc Rivers, it makes a lot of sense. He's really in a hot seat. I see him getting fired and coming home to New York next season. Jeff Hornacek is also in the hot seat. If he doesn't produce this season, you know, it, it looks like a movement going back home. You're going to see a lot J- of, you know. JP, I will say this to you because I got to get ready to go. I see Mark Jackson having a better chance at getting the New York Knicks job 
than I see Doc Rivers getting that chance. I can see Doc Rivers going back to someplace like Orlando or someplace else before coming to New York, but that's just me. Let's go to Ron in New Jersey real quick. You're live with Stephen A. Go ahead, Ron. Hey, nice speaking with you. A real honor. Thank uh, you. In regard to Michael, uh, Michael Bennett, you know, he's trying to portray a, a, a positive message, yet he's, when he sits during the national anthem, whatever message he has just goes out the window. Totally out the window. People do not respect anybody that sits during the national anthem. My suggestion to him is that if he has a positive message that he wants to to send to the people of America, how about stand during the national anthem, wrap an American flag around yourself, and hold up a peace sign with your fingers? They are people who have right. a positive message. I got you, Ron, but my response, my retort to that would be, whereas there's millions of people who would speak against him on that, there are millions of people who would support him in the position that he has already taken because that clearly has been the case, A. And B, and more importantly, Ron, I would say to you, who are you or anybody else to tell him how to protest? I, I, I agree with that, but you could see it didn't work for Colin Kaepernick. Well, but, so but it's not, but it's not, affecting, it's not affecting him. It's not affecting him. He's got a job. He just signed a thirty-plus million dollar contract. <laughs> we He's fine. Uh, hey, I, right. I just just uh, one one other thing, uh, real quickly uh, about the ball players not going to the White House. You know, if you would have asked me a few months ago, you know, win a championship, you go to the White House, I would say, how can you not go to the White House, meet the and president, get a little bit the tour of the place, say a couple things, yeah, but, but now what's going on now? Now, completely different. I, I got I, you. I kept it, I'm going to say this. How can you go to the White House? There you go. I appreciate that call, Ron. You seem to be very enlightened. Thanks a lot. Let's go to Maurice in L.A. You're live with Stephen A. Real quick, Maurice. Go ahead. Maurice, go ahead. Bye, Maurice. Markel, you're live with Stephen A. Real quick. Go. Hey, what's going on, Stephen A.? Hey, I just wanted to uh, talk to you real quick. I mean, uh, I didn't like how the media is uh, – is for trans Ezekiel Elliott still. Uh, he's the, y'all, you guys are sitting there on television making him seem like he's guilty based on the evidence has been uh, Stop right there. Stop right there. Stop right there. We're not doing anything. The NFL has done it with the report that they put out detailing what transpired on July 17th, July 19th, and July 21st of 2016. That's the evidence that everybody is leaning on. That's the problem Ezekiel Elliott has, not pundits. Go ahead. Right, we got that part. But what the NFL put out is not necessarily what was exactly happening. I feel like the media is not doing their due Stop right there. Diligence. Stop right there. Ezekiel Elliott is not disputing those things. He's saying there's more to it than that, and they suspended him for six games. So now what? I know they suspended him for six games, but I'm asking why isn't the media trying to paint a better picture than what they are? They're basically well, what, what, But what are we, oh, wait, what are oh, we oh, supposed wait. to do, Markel? What are we supposed to do? Is. What do you mean? Because I don't believe you guys are telling the other side of the story, the whole story, the one that the police actually got, the witness statement, everybody who actually was on the affidavit. We've read everything. We've read about her. We've read about her trying to extort money from him. We read about how she said there was a sex tape that she would put out. We told about how she said that, you know what, I'm going to ruin your career and your life. All of that's been told. But in the end, what they're saying is it's more probable than not then physical violence was exacted against her. How do you get around that? And they suspended him six games because of it, knowing the evidence. Think about that over the week, and we'll talk Monday. It's Stephen A. signing off. Peace and love, y'all. Talk to you. That's just a sample of what you'll hear on the Stephen A. Smith Show. Weekdays at 1 p.m. Eastern on Sirius XM Channel 80 and the ESPN app. This, this is the Stephen A. Smith Show Podcast. I'm Stephen A. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the latest edition of the Stephen A. Smith Show, coming at you as I love to do every weekday over the airwaves of ESPN Radio. That's 98.7 FM New York City. That's 710 ESPN LA. And, of course, nationwide over the airwaves of ESPN Radio. Sirius XM style, Channel 80. Number to call up, as always, is 866-729-ESPN. That's 866-729-3776. Got a jam-packed show coming your way today. Uh, Lots of stuff to get into in regards to LeBron and Kyrie, of course. We saw Aaron Judge smack a 457-shot 
against the New York Mets. We saw the Dodgers in a comeback victory. Yasiel Puig saves the day. Lots of stuff get to get into without question. Looking forward to doing just that. Nick Saban making news. Urban Meyer making news. All of those things are things that we absolutely have to touch on. And at some point in time during this day, we will have a discussion, a very frank discussion, about whether or not you'd like to see more white individuals, specifically white players, get involved uh, socially from an activist perspective in support of a guy like Colin Kaepernick and beyond. Lots of stuff to get into today right here on the Stephen A. Smith Show, 866-729-ESPN. That's 866-729-3776. But there's something else that's on my mind that I want to get into. And the reason why I want to get into this because, um, obviously, folks are making news for all the wrong reasons as it pertains to the National Football League and the National Football League Players Association. Uh, they're getting into it big time in regards to each other's respective positions on how this Ezekiel Elliott scenario is being handled. I don't have the direct article in front of me, but I really, really don't need it. Uh, The NFL launched a serious big-time shot at the National Football League's Players Association, who are essentially representing Ezekiel Elliott at this point in time. Remember, his appeal to the six-game suspension handed down by Roger Goodell gets heard by uh, Hollywood Henderson, if I remember correctly, August 29th. He will hear the case of Ezekiel Elliott. He was also the same individual, Mr. Henderson, we're talking about here, uh, that heard Greg Hardy's case along with others in the past that reduced Greg Hardy's suspension from 10 games to four games. A couple of years back, he will hear Ezekiel Elliott's case uh, on August 29th, and they will go from there. And obviously, the Players Association and representing Ezekiel Elliott is making the case that, you know what, there are some questionable tactics that have been exercised by the alleged victim. The NFL decides to launch its own salvo by, by essentially calling the NFL Players Association disgraceful because they're villainizing the victim. And obviously you're going to have a lot of women out there that feel the same way. You're going to have people that say, they don't want to to hear anything about Ezekiel Elliott, July 17th, July 19th, July 21st of last year. Five different instances took place where marks and bruises on the neck, arms, shoulders, etc. of the alleged victim actually happened, and they don't want to hear anybody giving Ezekiel Elliott a break. All of those positions are fair, as far as I'm concerned. Do I think he's guilty based on the preponderance of evidence that I witnessed, that I saw, that I read from the NFL's report? Absolutely. He seems guilty of sin. The NFL clearly made a case to buffer and augment their own argument that, indeed, it's more probable than not that he committed acts of domestic violence. And assuming that stuff is true, ain't nobody want to hear a damn word of support for Ezekiel Ezekiel Elliott. Shut the hell up, serve your six games, and be done with it. Except the Players Association as a union is saying it's not that simple. Yahoo Sports also, you know, reported some things that, dare we say, bring the alleged victim's agenda in the question. Now, before anybody gets in an uproar, let's be clear. Regardless of what her agenda may have been, whether it be to extort money or, as she was quoted as saying, ruining his career, what is undeniable, it appears, is that domestic violence took place. And here's the thing. If indeed you are Ezekiel Elliott, And you've committed acts of domestic violence. Her agenda is irrelevant. And for those out there that are willing to come to the defense of Ezekiel Elliott, let me say this. By this time, you were already drafted by the Dallas Cowboys. You were already a member of the Dallas Cowboys. 
So if that's the case, why is it that you didn't reach out for their assistance? Why didn't you reach out for the assistance of the NFL? Because you know these are the kind of things that they make sure rookies know and are aware of, right? We are here to help. Call us. Tell us. Inform us of what your predicament may be. We want to get involved because we don't want you to put yourself in a position where you can impugn or sully the integrity of the National Football League, the Shield. So there's no excuse for Ezekiel Elliott. It appears. Players Association is saying, essentially, tacitly or otherwise, We beg to differ. And so as a result, it comes down to the NFL Players Association against the NFL button heads yet again, which is where my nerves get raked. And I'm going to tell you why. And it has absolutely nothing to do with Ezekiel Elliott. It has everything to do with the relationship that exists between Roger Goodell and NFL Players Association Executive Director DeMorris Smith. See, Ladies and gentlemen, in my mind, I blame DeMora Smith a lot of times for this. Let me explain to you why. DeMora Smith is a fighter. DeMora Smith is a highly intelligent and accomplished individual who I profoundly respect. But if there's one thing that I've never liked about him, and I will admit wholeheartedly that it's more of an assumption than actual fact to support it, just terms of perspective. Here's what I mean. I believe there is a difference between player negotiation, you know, labor negotiations and labor relations. As a person that has studied and, and has covered collective bargaining negotiations for the last 18 years, 19 years, I firmly believe that. You across the negotiating table from Roger Goodell is entirely different than labor relations. Labor negotiations is you sitting across that table. Labor relations is DeMora Smith cultivating relationships with the power brokers in the National Football League. That would mean Roger Goodell and the owners he works for cultivating those relationships to facilitate you doing things that don't involve the courts. And it seems to me that when it comes to legalese, legal issues, and lawyers, on far too many occasions as it pertains to the Players Association, too many lawyers are involved. To me, that means DeMora Smith ain't doing his job in that regard. Doesn't mean he's not worthy of the three-year extension I believe he just received. Doesn't mean he's not worthy of his salary. Doesn't mean that overall he's not a good man who works hard, who cares about the players, and is doing the best job that he can do and probably does a good job. I'm talking about specifically as it pertains to the issues of cultivating a relationship with Roger Goodell where you can spend less of the players' money on lawyers I think DeMora Smith comes up flagrantly short. And Roger Goodell, too. I think when specifically when it comes to one another, each other, I think both of them act like damn children. Every time you turn around, they button heads with one another. I believe if they did their jobs as it pertains to labor relations, and cultivating relationships with one another. I think Roger Goodell would be spending less of the owner's money. DeMora Smith would be spending less than the player's money. And more things would make sense and be handled appropriately so. And in that regard, I blame DeMora Smith because Roger Goodell does have the power. A power that DeMora Smith and the Players Association, albeit begrudgingly, still conceded to him. They gave it to him. They gave him autonomy. They gave him the right to arbitrarily come down with decisions, heavy-handed, I might add, and then turn around and not only be judge, jury, and executioner, but also the damn appellate judge. They gave Roger Goodell that right. So every time I see DeMora Smith, 
and a players association fighting with the league, the first thing that comes to my mind was, is what the hell you give Roger Goodell a power for? What you give it to him for? Still doesn't absolve Ezekiel Elliott, though. Still doesn't absolve him. Man, does this brother have problems. But regardless of those problems, I'm still not in support of him continuing to fight this. I'll explain why in a minute. You're listening live to the Stephen A. Smith Show, ESPN Radio. Daddy, where do babies come from? Uh, well, uh... Honey? Mommy went to the store. Oh, well, you see, um, well, there's a mommy and a daddy, right? Right. And see, when they call Geico, uh, they could save a bunch of money on car insurance. Oh, really? And that makes them happy? Yes, that makes them very happy. That's good. Yeah. Well, I'm glad we could have this talk, sunshine. (laughs) Geico, because saving 15% or more on car insurance is always a great answer. You're listening to the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. Let me be very, very clear. Like my man Max Kellerman on First Take with Molly Kerum and yours truly every weekday morning on ESPN. Let me be very, very clear about what I'm about to say. I agree with Max. For the most part, if you're innocent, you fight, you fight, you fight. You know, if you're going to sit up there and, you know, you didn't do something and somebody accuses you of something, you don't go for that. But ladies and gentlemen, there comes a point in time in life where you weigh your options. And I'll share a little story with you. My producers know this about me. And the individuals, and I mentioned this on First Take yesterday, the individuals I'm about to talk about are, I mean, they are gone. They are, they're, they're dead. God rest their souls and bless their souls. They're no longer here, but it's still funny in this respect. Every time I need a laugh, I asked my producers to replay the interview of the late, great Ed Bradley of 60 Minutes talking to Michael J- Michael Jackson. He's interviewing Michael Jackson, who's been accused of child molestation and all of this other stuff, okay? And Ed Bradley sits up there and says, you hear the clock ticking, tick, 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 like 60 Minutes. And then he says, as we sit here today, do you still think it's okay? For a 45-year-old man to be sleeping in the bed with little boys? And Michael Jackson says, of course. Not if you're a predator. Not if you're a murderer. Not if you're Jack the Ripper, which I am not. (laughs) I swear to you, ladies and gentlemen, when I saw that interview for the first time, I was, I, I'll be the first, I was, I was eating a bowl of Crunchberries on a Sunday night while watching 60 Minutes, and I, I, I swear to you, I almost, I almost choked to death. I, I was laughing so hard, and then the Crunchberry got stuck in my throat. I was laughing so hard, I almost choked to death. That's how funny it was to me. And he said, of course, you know, and I'm just, and, and, and here's the thing. I bring up that story, ladies and gentlemen, because guess what that has to do with Ezekiel Elliott? Just like when the late, great Johnny Cochran, God bless his soul, just like when a late, great Johnny Cochran was representing Michael Jackson, case got settled for about 25 million. Why well, settle? You innocent. You innocent. Why well, settle? You know why? Because even if Michael Jackson was innocent, how does it help you to have your name? plastered all over the media every day, every day, every day for an ongoing case that you haven't dropped that ball that involves the words child molestation. How does that help you? How does that help you? That's what I'm saying about Ezekiel Elliott. No matter how much he fights this, and I got to admit to you, based on what I read, he seems guilty as hell. I ain't gonna lie to you. If the NFL was trying to make the case, it's more probable than not that he did it. Damn, they did it. They did it. Now, Yahoo Sports, along with the NFL Players Association, have come out with other things 
that leaves the uh, gender and the behavior of the alleged victim in the question. But nothing I've seen absolves Ezekiel Elliott. And if you're going to fight this, and there's no way, because you got to remember, he can't prove his innocence. He was never arrested. Prosecutor dropped the case because it was inconsistent evidence, which means that the only thing that could exonerate Ezekiel Elliott is if the NFL were to say, our information was wrong. We fabricated it or we miss, we, we're misinformed. We didn't report it correctly and blah, blah, blah. That's the only way. That's the only way. Other than that, people have already made their decision about Ezekiel Elliott. There's nothing he can do. There's nothing way. There's no way around it. They're going to believe what they want to believe. They're going to believe he's committed he's committed domestic violence. So why not just drop it and let it go away? 866-729-ESPN. That is the number to call up. Let's go to Dominique. You're live with Stephen A. What's going on? How you doing, Stephen A.? I'm all right. Go ahead, man. All right. About the Zeke thing, I'm iffy because... There are some affidavits that prove he didn't hit her, and on one incident, he wasn't even there. What's your take? Um, my take is until I see something that definitively contradicts what the NFL reported, it doesn't matter. Because if the if 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 Ezekiel Elliott and his representation doesn't present that level of factual information to the National Football League, it doesn't matter. They're going to stick by their report. And what's in that report is what we're all going to believe. In the report, what then? I, I couldn't hear you, sir. You only you only came in in the last second. What did you oh, say? Sorry. I'm saying if those affidavits are in the report and the NFL knew about it, doesn't that make them look bad? That makes them look very, very bad that they didn't add that to their report. I totally agree. But they're the ones that are making the decision. They're judge, jury, and executioner in all of this, plus they're the appellate court. Yeah, that's true. The CBA does factor in. That's right. So it doesn't, there's no way around it, Dominique. There's no way around it. Appreciate the call, man. 866-729-ESPN. More of your calls in a minute. It's the Stephen A. Smith Show on ESPN Radio. Guess what? You're in the middle of the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. Damn it, I mean it. That's not even though that was the first one. That beat right there, first time I had ever heard that beat was when Eminem was going up against that kid the first round in a finale of Eight Mile, and he smoked him, you know, and walked my white behind back across Eight Mile. That's how he ended that one. But the the middle battle was was, um, was the one against that that guy that he said looks looks Snoop Dogg has got himself a boob job. When Eminem said it about that kid, that kid actually gave him the best battle. That was kind of fly. It was a good movie. Eminem did a hell of a job with that. No doubt about it. Back to the phones we go, 866-729-ESPN. That's 866-729-3776. My brother, Mike in Denver, you're live with Stephen A. What's up, man? Talk to me. How you doing, brother? I'm good, man. How are you and the family? Go ahead, bro. I'm, we doing fine. The family fine. Fatty told me to tell you hello. All right, man. Bro. I just was uh, want to talk about Ezekiel out of this thing just going overboard, man. They 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 coming up with evidence now. Like the, the first caller just said, he wasn't there. If yeah, that ain't ridiculous, because ain't nobody gonna let the, let somebody spurn their name like that, and they wasn't even there. That's right. And that got to be the craziest thing, Roger Goodell could do is uh, fumble the ball like that and come to find out the man wasn't there. So we know that ain't true. He was there. So, you know, man, the man should just go ahead and take his medicine like a man and move on. You ain't got no business putting yourself in that situation anyway. That's right. That's what it comes down to. But I think people are pointing to this in fairness to everybody. Here's here's what the deal is right here. And and, and by the way, Mr. Harold Henderson, that's not Hollywood Henderson. You know, I was mistaken by saying that earlier today, and I said it on TV as well, and I didn't mean to. Harold Henderson, who's going to hear this case, who heard Greg Hardy's case and others, that is not Hollywood Henderson. So that was my mistake. I apologize. I don't know why I was thinking about Hollywood Henderson because I just saw him for the first time a few weeks ago at uh, at uh, Fred Whitfield's uh, golf outing in Charlotte, North Carolina. But back to this story uh, involving Ezekiel Elliott. On Yahoo Sports today, right, the article mm-hmm. is written by Charles Robinson. It's NFL columnist, right? He says, this is the first graph, Mike. The woman who accused Dallas Cowboys star Ezekiel Elliott of domestic violence 
admitted to NFL investigators having a text exchange in which she discussed leveraging sex videos featuring her and Elliot for money from the player. According to documents obtained by Yahoo Sports, the exchange is contained in a 160 page report prepared by NFL investigators and in allegations that Elliot committed multiple acts of violence against ex-girlfriend Tiffany Thompson. Within that report, investigators noted a September 16th text message exchange between Thompson and a friend in which Thompson raised the idea of selling sex videos of herself and Elliot. During the conversation, Thompson's friend suggested we could blackmail him with that, to which Thompson responded, I want to, bro. The NFL's report also stated that Thompson admitted registering an email address titled Ezekiel Elliott Sex Vids in August of 2016. So here's the bottom line, ladies and gentlemen. Clearly, she was a woman that. I, well, let me take that back because nothing's clear. It appears based on the reports. She was willing to extort money from him. Uh, he was having sex with her. It was consensual, uh, according to – but here's here's where it gets tricky, y'all. All of this was in the NFL's report. Wanting to sell a video for sex. I'm sorry, sorry. It's wanting to sell a video of them having sex for money. Uh, if you're trying to get it from Elliot, you're extorting him. I think that's what it's called. Then you also got to take into account she's on the record talking about how she was going to ruin his his career. Ladies and gentlemen, that doesn't mean he didn't commit domestic violence. See what I'm saying, Mike? Exactly. You, it, 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 doesn't, it doesn't mean it, – now, he could make the – if he wants to try and make the case, he could, make, he could try to make the argument that she provoked him. <laughs> there ain't no damn excuse to hit her. Can't do that. Right. But the Players Association and him are clearly going in that direction. They're going in the direction that 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 look at how crazy she was, but they're not realizing that that's motive. You see what I'm saying? That's motive. That's motive. And as a result, the NFL took all of that into consideration, which justifies the six game suspension. And, and you're exactly right. It, it, it goes to this extent right here. You hit me in my mouth, okay. Hey, whatever I do after that doesn't matter if I don't, you know, do nothing to you physically. Whatever I say or whatever I try to do, that don't exclude that you physically abuse me. Well, not so. just that. And here's the other thing, Mike, that we all have to pay attention to. And to me, this is the most indictable. This is the most indictable evidence against Ezekiel Elliott. This ain't no one incident. There's five different incidences over three separate days. July 17th, 19th, and 21st of 2016. If this girl was acting that crazy and coming at you like that, how did she get in your presence five different times? He liked it. <laughs> you, know what it you know what it is. Did you say he liked it? <laughs> you already, oh see what you already Brother, know, man. No, I'm just saying, man. It, I mean, you don't have a case. You don't have a case. <laughs> exactly. I mean, he's getting, look, man. Uh, Zeke Elliott, drop it, man. Drop it. You ain't got no case to stand on. There's no. I can't see it. I just can't see it. I appreciate you, bro. Thank you so much. All right, man. I love you. Listen, here's the deal, y'all. July 17th, 19th, and 21st, there were five different incidences involving this girl and Ezekiel Elliott over those three days. How the hell are you around her five different times? Five different times, why are you around this girl? I, I don't see how Ezekiel Elliott has a leg to stand on. I really, really don't. Jaron, you're live with Stephen A. Talk to me. Hey, appreciate it, Stephen A. I, Go ahead. Uh, I just got a couple two, couple two cents as a uh, – former licensed NFLPA contract advisor, so an agent and an attorney out of Phoenix. I think okay. that the, uh, the main thing to remember here is burden of proof, right? Like everybody keeps saying, is he guilty? Is he innocent? The issue isn't whether he's guilty or innocent. It's whether he is liable or not liable. It is preponderance of the evidence, not reasonable doubt. So it is on a scale, 
which one is 51%, which one is more probable than not. Did he do an act? Did he not do an act? I mean, it, it's just like O.J. Simpson. Everybody says in 96 that he was found not guilty at trial criminally, but then he was found liable in civil court because the burden of proof is different. Now, okay, I got your it. Former caller, your former caller is talking about affidavits. Does this prove this? Does this prove that? Is it conclusive? What that is is weight of the evidence, right? What they balance on that 51 Listen, listen, scale. for my listen, for my listener's purpose, don't get too technical, all right? Just go ahead and get to your point. Right, no, but what I'm saying is you look at that scale and you say there's five different instances. It's more probable on the totality of the circumstance that he did this. And, you know, you think of we where all the get NFL that. is at, at, what the rules are, and then the, the burden to, to, uh, to disprove that on appeal, it's just it's way too high. You're right. They gave Roger Goodell way well, too much well, power. Well, that's the whole point. That's the whole point, Jaron. You going? You getting a bit too technical with all of this? Here's the bottom line: the report that was issued was by the very league that suspended you, and the appellate court is by the league that very well that 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 that, that suspended you. You ain't getting around it. You're just not getting around it. It's just that simple to me. I don't see how you get around it. That's the exact point. You set the rules of the game before you go into the game, and then you're going to complain about the rules after they're already set. It, Can't see it. It's complaining about the rules of Monopoly after you buy the game. It's, it's just you're setting yourself up for failure. Appreciate the call, man. Let's go to James. You're live with Stephen A. What's going on, James? Good afternoon. Good morning. How are you? I'm fine, and you? Go ahead, buddy. Okay, if I'm not mistaken, did you say that you had a problem with Colin Kaepernick not voting and his stand and what he took? No, just not voting. Had no problem with his stance. Okay. Now, my question to you is, do you know how the electoral college works? Yes, I do. Okay. So then you realize that it's a number that you have to reach. Doesn't right? matter to me. Doesn't, doesn't matter to me. Matter. That, that, that doesn't matter to me. What I'm talking about is in terms of your ancestors and others and the sacrifices that were made for you to have the right to vote. I believe that everyone should exercise their right to vote whenever they can. And if you choose not to, you choose not to. But to announce to the world after taking the position that you took that you were not going to vote, that was my issue with Colin Kaepernick. It was even more of an issue with me than him not voting. It was announcing to the world that you didn't vote because you're taking the position as if you're trying to encourage others to follow you. And I don't think that's the way to go in the United States states of america that's just my personal belief okay i understand that but i look at it like this too if you have to reach a certain number right mm -hmm. what is it 270 or 271 if i'm not 271 mistaken. 271 right yes sir so that means that the electoral college with the way that it's set up if once you reach that number you're already president correct yeah okay so then in theory in theory right your vote does not matter that's the ignorant that, that that with all due respect that's an ignorant position to take and the reason why that's an ignorant position to take is that usually by the time you're voting, okay, you don't know whether or not who's reached that number, how close or how far away from that number, et cetera, et cetera. That's entirely and totally irrelevant to your point at hand. If you have a problem with him voting or you don't have a problem with him not voting, that's one thing. But to get into a technical discussion about Oh, being a far away from that number or not having an impact on that number is utterly ridiculous. We're American citizens. We're African-Americans. We have a history of having to battle for the right to vote, just like women had to battle for the right to vote. And it's a principled position that's devoid of numbers. That's pretty much even devoid of impact per se, because depending on which election you're talking about, your impact ebbs and flows. What's undeniable and what's indisputable is that lives were sacrificed for the right to vote. And considering that reality, you don't shove it aside while in the same breath talking about wanting to promote change. That's just ignorant, and I'm not entertaining this conversation any longer. 866-729-ESPN. That's 866-729-3776. More to Stephen A. Smith Show on ESPN Radio in a minute. You're listening to the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. Stephen A. Smith Show, ESPN Radio, coming back at you, as I always do. Here with you for the next hour and change. Let's get back to the phones for I get into some more NFL news circulating and percolating. Um, I want Adam Sheff has got a report out right now. We'll be talking about that and then some starting hour number two of this show. But for now, let's get back to the phones. By the way, 
Aaron Judge, monster. Keep striking out every damn day, though. I think it's 37 consecutive games. Uh, but that's all right. Keep smacking those home runs. We can get those strikeouts. It's no big deal to us. Matter of fact, let's go to Robert and Cali. You're live with Stephen A. What's up, Rob? How are you, man? Hey, Stephen, how you doing? I ain't Talk talked to, to you in a while. What's going on, man? But, uh, hey, I, hey, I just want to let you know, um, I've been hearing you talk about them Yankees. Trust yep. me, they ain't going to World Series. Man, you, don't you call up here with this blasphemy. Don't you call up here with this blasphemy, Robert. I mean, listen, hey. you know, see, see, it's people like you that get on my nerves. Where are you living at now? You living in L.A., ain't you? No, I live, no, I live in Cincinnati. State. I'm, I'm going to get my truck and go home. I, I, I'm, all I'm trying to say to you is this. I know the Dodgers, I mean, everybody chilling, you know, Dodgers, what is it, 50 games, 51 games, over 500. Well, you know, so what they going to do, Dodgers, listen, Dodgers better win this year. You on pace to win 116 games. That's time to Mariners. That's Eclipse of the Mariners. I think it's time to Mariners from 2001. They ain't win no damn World Series. Let me tell you something right now. You got all of these moments. That's fine. But I'm telling you this right now. The Dodgers, with Bryce Harper going down, with the Cubs coming up. I mean, they, they're still in first place, but they're not what they were last year. And with the Dodgers running rough shot over Major League Baseball the way that they do, they had damn well better win the World Series this year. The press is on the Dodgers and getting Kershaw back. I mean, please, in the case of the New York Yankees, look, 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 Robert. Mm -hmm. I understand there's some troubles. They have won three straight, though. But I understand some troubles. I got it. I got it. But they still they still got the crew with Judge and Sanchez and, and the crew. I'm not worried about them too much. Listen, Boston's pulling away, but they're only four and a half games in front. They can still get caught. I'm not disagreeing. I'm not losing faith. Plus, the Yankees will be the wild card team anyway. I am not going to lose faith in my New York Yankees, Robert. I will not do it. I hear you, but uh, I ain't saying the Dodgers going either. I, I'm thinking the uh, I'm thinking the Cubs are going to go back and they're going to play the Astros. I will tell you this. I will tell you this. Before the season began, I actually did say that the Cubs would go to the World Series this year. I actually thought it was going to be the Cubs. I wasn't sure about anything else. I didn't think the Indians would be a rematch. I, I think I thought it initially, but then I watched early, very early on in the season, I wasn't sold on the Indians. But uh -huh. I think, hey, listen, listen, I can't rule out the Cubs. Madden's a hell of a manager, A. And B, look, Chris Bryan and those boys can ball, and they're champions now, and the curse has been alleviated. So there's no pressure on them. And it's specifically with the Dodgers playing the way that the Dodgers have been playing. How are you going to win all of this and did not have pressure in the postseason? Pressure breaks pipes, bro. I don't know that's if the Dodgers are ready for this. I really don't. That's what, we'll I, was, see. That's what I was saying. Let me go, man. I appreciate the call, buddy. Thank you so much. Let's go to Ron in L.A. You're live with Stephen A. Talk to me, man. Hey, what's going on, Stephen A.? How hey, you doing? Man, I appreciate you and everything you're doing. Thank but let you. me get straight to the point. Yep. Uh, I kind of feel you on your stance regarding uh, he should have voted. And I'm talking about Kaepernick. Yes, sir. However, mm -hmm. when we going to talk about the issue? Okay. When we're going to get off of the fact about him taking a knee or him not standing, let's talk about the issue. Everybody's talking about patriotism. That's basically what this is all about. Let's just get to the issue. Well, let's talk about the issue for a second, okay? We're talking right. about prejudice, uh, racism, uh, brutality on the part of police officers. Are, is that what you're talking about? Yes, sir. When have we yes, not sir. talked about that? Yeah, well, I mean, it's Hold on, wait a second. Time, 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 time. Listen, Ron, be fair. It's a sports show. The fact that we even broach it says something. Now, there's, an, there's a bevy of news programs and beyond that talk about all of that stuff, and you know that. Yep. And on this show, we've certainly talked about it, even though it's a sports show. <laughs> so you can't complain about that. Come on, bro. <laughs> well, I'm not complaining. I I'm just saying, I'm just, no, 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 we all brothers, man. No, you know, I'm not offended. I'm just saying, <laughs> think about this. When you're tuning into a sports show, right? Yeah. All of these issues actually get in the way. Let's call it what it is. Because as much as these issues are important as these issues are, and as much as we need to talk about it, you and I know good and damn well we'd rather be talking about the Cowboys, the Steelers, the Jets, Giants, the Rams, and, 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 and the Patriots and everything else. Come on now. Uh, well, you know, when you don't talk about my Lions enough. No, 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 so no, 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 let me ask you this question. Are you interested in talking about your Lions? Yeah, that's right. You, then you that's know you're right. not. You know, when y'all going to win a damn playoff game? Come on. It's Stafford, man. It's Stafford. That's all, I, listen, I, right. I, whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm not sure about that. Had a good year last year. I, I mean, hey. Not a good year. Hey. Come on now. 
the Come athlete on now. in me, the athlete in me says Stafford should have played. I mean, well, Stafford should have played because he's an athlete. But the fan in me says he should have sat out. True All enough. Right. All I'm trying to say, what I'm trying to say, and my bigger point is this, because we got to get ready to go in 10 seconds. All I'm trying to say to you is that those are the issues we want to talk about. It's actually, we actually lucky we got an opportunity to slide these other issues in. You see what I'm saying? That's all I'm trying to say. There's nothing to complain about. It's a sports show. We'll touch on, touch on other things. We've got to talk sports now. You know that, Ron. Got to bounce. Appreciate the call, though, bro. Anytime. Hour number two up next. NFL, Stephen A, ESPN Radio. That's just a sample of what you'll hear on the Stephen A. Smith Show. Weekdays at 1 p.m. Eastern on Sirius XM Channel 80 and the ESPN app. This this is the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. I'm Stephen A. Hour number two for the Stephen A. Smith Show here with you for the next hour or so over the airways of ESPN Radio. Sirius XM Channel 80. Number to call up as always is 866-729-ESPN. That's 866-729-3776. couple of things to point out as we uh, sit here today. Uh, number one, uh, Adam Schefter is reporting, A, Le'Veon Bell is expected back with the Pittsburgh Steelers before the season opener. As long as he's back before the season begins, who cares? I don't care that a running back decided to miss training camp. I really, really don't. Um, he deserves his money. I hope he gets it. He's big time, incredibly gifted, arguably the best in the game. Uh, he deserves his money, but at the same time, I don't give a damn that he's not playing in preseason games. I don't think there should be preseason games, personally. You know, not unless you're going to let, let people watch for free. I, I, I despise the fact that the NFL charges for preseason games. We don't know 99% of the players that are playing, especially if they ain't the starters or any of the starters. So Le'Veon Bell getting back before the season open is good. Aaron Donald for the Los Angeles Rams, however, may end up sitting out the entire 2017 season. And ladies and gentlemen, I want to say if he decides to do this, I wholeheartedly support his decision. He is the best player on the Los Angeles Rams. Period. He's impactful. Period. And when you consider the contracts that everybody from the Fletcher Cox to the Vaughn Millers to the J.J. Watts and others have signed, the fact that this kid with youth on his side, along with skill, is having hardball played with him by the Los Angeles Rams of all people. You got to be kidding me. The nerve of this franchise to sit up there and act like they got some damn leverage. You stink. And you got the nerve to play hardball with your best player? If I'm Aaron Donald, you know what? I'm sitting out for the year. I'm willing to lose the money. So why should I sacrifice myself, my body, to potential injuries for this moribund franchise when I can save a year of wear and tear on my body until I get my damn money? It's a simple situation to me. If he can afford to do it, Aaron Donald, do it. They don't deserve you any damn way. I mean, you got to be kidding me. Who the hell are the Los Angeles Rams think they are? First of all, you're lucky you're being called the Los Angeles Rams because in a great city like Los Angeles, La La, the city of angels, Tinseltown, Hollywood, what the hell have you done to deserve to be associated with Los Angeles? I mean, really, has anybody taken the time to ask themselves that question? I mean, really, seriously, you're the Los Angeles Rams. What have you done? What have you done? Do you realize how awful this team has been? They haven't made the playoffs since 2004. Ladies and gentlemen, that's 13 years, man. 13 years. Do y'all know I had an Afro 13 years ago? Hair line was about three feet forward. I had cheap clothes, couldn't afford one of my suits, let alone several. I had just gotten rid of my 85 Mercury Topaz. I mean, that's how long ago it was. I mean, you got to be kidding me. These dudes got the nerve to sit up there and play hardball when an elite player like Aaron Donald? And did I get into the ineptitude of Mr. Jeff Fisher? 
Seven and eight, seven and seven, eight and one, seven and nine, six and ten, seven and nine, four and twelve. And they t- ladies and gentlemen, this man was a coach in the National Football League for 22 years. 16 years he missed the playoffs. 16 years, 16 times. He missed the playoffs in 22 years and somehow kept getting contract extensions. It was so bad, ladies and gentlemen. Do you know that the Rams gave this man an extension and tried to hide it? (laughs) They tried to hide it. They They didn't even announce it. And then when it became public information, when we all found out about it, they damn near had to apologize. Before they finally came to their senses and fired him. Now, I'm not saying that Jeff Fisher doesn't deserve a check and he doesn't deserve a job in the NFL. He seems to be a good enough man. He's clearly knowledgeable about the game of football. There's contributions that he can make in the league office. But being a head coach in the NFL, hell no. Talk about having your opportunities. This man was a model of ineptitude. What happened? You gave him a contract extension and then got to audacity, the unmitigated gall. To try and hide it practically. But you can sit there and stick out your chest and deny Aaron Donald what he deserves. I hope Aaron Donald does sit out the year. I really, really do. This team was 4-12 and last year. They didn't do a damn thing anyway. Who cares? Who cares? Dead last offensively. Second worst passing attack. Second worst running attack in the entire NFL. Dead last in points and yards accumulated. I mean, just inept. But you holding out on Aaron Donald. Nerve. The absolute positive nerve of this team. They should be ashamed of themselves. They should be ashamed of themselves. You should be knocking on his door. When he opens the damn door, you should have a masseuse waiting for him, along with somebody to give him a massage and a pedicure. You should be on your knees sitting up there saying, thank you for being willing to wear our uniform because you stink. And just in the interest of full disclosure, I am fully aware of the fact that this is the flagship station, 710 ESPN LA, flagship station for the Los Angeles Rams. I don't give a damn. When you deserve the credit, I'll give it to you. A lot of nice people work over there for the Rams. And I'm happy for them. But the product that has been put on the field, you lucky you allowed in the streets of LA. You lucky you allowed to represent the city of Los Angeles. Let me just be clear. And you going to hold out on Aaron Donald of all people. Why don't you get in touch with a genie or somebody and rewind the damn clock and try to get a quarterback other than Jared Goff? Why don't you take Carson Wentz? Why don't you try to do that? The nerve. How many, by the way, how many games the Rams going to win this year, y'all? It's a rhetorical question because none of y'all don't have to answer. Ain't, none, ain't a damn one of y'all going to say more than five games. You're in the NFC West. Got Arizona in there. You got Seattle up in there. You might beat San Francisco. You'll give Seattle and Arizona tough games. But what you really going to do? What you really going to do? You got Sammy Watts. You got to hope he healthy. He gave away a corner. You got Tavon Austin just blowing his career away because you can't find somebody to throw him the damn football. What else you got? You going to appreciate Gurley? You going to utilize him effectively? 866-729-ESPN. Go to break so I can calm down. You're listening to Love Advice with Leanne. Caller, you're on the air. Uh, Hi, Leanne. Long-time listener, first-time caller. (laughs) Why, in your professional opinion, do you never take my calls off the air? Is this Carl? 
Yep, it's Carl. I mean, we had a few dates. Everything was great. I thought.、Uh... Well, you know, when you switch to Geico, you could save a lot of money on car insurance. Okay, awesome. You should call them. I will. Geico, because saving fifteen percent or more on car insurance is always a great answer. You're listening to the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. A couple of things. Let me finish my point on the Rams before I get back to some other items. Aaron Donald is unquestionably one of the top ten players in the in the game. Period. Big time quickness, no shortage of effort. Finishes at the quarterback. You got him. Even though Quinn seems to be trending in the wrong direction, hey, things could happen. Ogletree, he's got to improve on his tackling because he misses too many of them. But the problem with this team is offense. Look, Sean McVay is a good hire. I like the direction that the Rams are going in. Sean McVay is there now. They got、um, Wade Phillips. As their defensive coordinator, you know I ain't gonna complain about that. Man's big time. As a defensive coordinator, not a head coach, but as a defensive coordinator, man's big time. Okay. But the defense with this team is not the problem. It's the offense. The one thing you've got going for you is the defense, and you're about to compromise that. We don't know whether or not Jared Goff can play. The man needs everything, needs weight, needs confidence, needs footwork, needs eye control, needs to stop being so transparent in the pocket, needs a whole bunch of stuff. Gurley didn't have an outstanding year. Tavon Austin just looks like he's losing interest. The brother can play, but if I had questionable quarterbacks with Jeff Fish as my coach, I'd look apathetic too. The one good thing you have going for you, if you're this team, the Los Angeles Rams, is your defense. And the dude who's unquestionably the best on it is who you gonna mess with. I have no patience with such stupidity. I just don't. I just don't. Eight six six seven two nine ESPN is eight six six seven two nine three seven seven six. Spent the first hour talking about a few things: anthem protest, Ezekiel Elliott. We know what that time it is. Talking to NFL, NFL PA. Obviously, I just told you Le'Veon Bell's going to be back with the Steelers before the season begins. I told you about Aaron Donald. By the way, you got Vegas talking about the best bet to make it to the Super Bowl is the Raiders. Not that they got a better chance than the New England Patriots, but if you're literally betting, gambling on who's the better bet, who can make you the most money, it's on the Raiders. As far as I'm concerned, their offense is big time. Defensively, all they've got is Khalil Mack. Guess Bruce Irvin and those guys you can give credit to, but I got to see it when I believe it. Mac is the Mac Daddy. Let's see what happens. And by the way, I started off this show talking to you about Michael Bennett and what he had to say. I mentioned it at the top of the show, but I'll I'll, I'll get more into detail about it now. Michael Bennett for the Seattle Seahawks was on the six, the six o'clock sports center yesterday with Michael Smith and Jamal Hill, and he pointed out how. White players need to get more actively involved, and if they were to do it, would this be better? Of course, it would be better. If they were to get involved in more protests and addressing the concerns that have that have that have that have permeated our communities and, and this country at this particular moment in time, white nationalist groups showing up in Charlottesville last weekend, a woman getting killed because one of the、uh, neo Nazis runs her over with a car, along with 19 other people ramming his car into a crowd. We just read about it today in Barcelona, where uh, uh, many more people have been injured, and I think ten has been killed. I mean, terrorism is alive and well, but the point is, is that how do you alleviate it? How do you stop it? Particularly in this country, would it would it would it help if whites got more involved? Yeah, nobody can dispute that. But let's not act like they have an obligation to get involved, particularly as it pertains to the national anthem issue involving Colin Kaepernick. A, they may not believe in that at all. B, they might compromise their own money. Because we live in a world where it ain't just blacks being stifled 
and Latinos being stifled. A whole bunch of white folks out there struggling, too. So if we want to be specific about what Michael Bennett had to say and really accentuate his point, it's the stars that need to step up. If Tom Brady and Drew Brees and Aaron Rodgers and Big Ben Roethlisberger and others stood up and said, hey, we need to contribute to the world being a better place. We need to do our part. If they imitated LeBron James, D-Wade, Carmelo Anthony, and Chris Paul at the ESPYs from last year, what kind of impact would that have on our society? If we're being honest, we don't know, but we guess it would help things significantly. But not just because you're white. It has to be those white athletes that really, really count like the names I mentioned. That's my thought. What about you? Back to the phones we go. Charlie, you're live with Stephen A. Talk to me. How you doing, Stephen A.? I'm all right. Talk uh, to me. It's, it's been a while since the last time we spoke. Uh, your mom was fighting and, and doing pretty good and haven't spoke to you since then. So my prayers to, to you thank, and your family. Thank you so much, Charlie. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Uh, you're welcome. Um, it, uh, it, there's some things that I'd like, I'd like about 60 seconds to explain some things. Go which ahead. Will my question it, it has everything to do with my question go ahead sir so some things i'm embarrassed about some things i'm ashamed of um born and raised in virginia my family tree goes as far back as robert e lee uh william henry harrison benjamin harrison um i have a uh, family that has been involved with the clan uh that i'm ashamed of uh and embarrassed about um i met my wife when i was nine years old uh she's a black woman uh, we've been together, still together, um, you know, almost 30 years. Um, and we had a conversation, got kind of heated, um, uh, talking about the protests and the hate that's going on. And she brought up a question that, that I really didn't have an answer for because I just, you know, the question was why would, why are the players protesting when I mean, I understand why they are, and I was trying to explain to her why they are, but her question was, what can they do because you can't, you can't fix hate? And that was my question to you. How can, with, with the protesting that's going on, and how, how can, you can't, you can't fix hate? Well, let me, say this to you. I, I, let, me, let me say this to you. Our former President Barack Obama alluded to this when he was quoting someone a few days ago and he was talking about how uh, hate is taught and if hate could be taught, so can love. That's one way to answer that question, even though it's all be, all be it's, uh, all be it, uh, a bit simplistic, but let me take it a step further. You know, a lot of times when these things are taught, it's because somehow some way people have been convinced that their way of life has been endangered, that somehow, some way, allowing others to live their lives compromise what they want. And as a result, they resent and thereby hate you for it. Now, clearly, that's an ill-informed position. It's an ill-informed perspective to have. But it's what they've been taught. So to me, one of the ways to alleviate it, to answer your question directly, Charlie, is to go about the business of doing everything that we can to make sure that those things are not taught. And more importantly, making it incredibly inconvenient for those who do learn such things to live in the world amongst the rest of us. That's why it was so important when people were talking about how the president of the United States needed to condemn the actions and the remarks of the white nationalist group on Saturday. He tried to draw a moral equivalent between the protesters. Well, one group of protesters were fending off being oppressed, while the other group of protesters were essentially fighting for the right to be oppressors. And that's what we have to understand. That's why there's no moral equivalent equivalence. Do you understand that, Charlie? 
Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, sir. I, I I really appreciate your time. I try to do the best I can as far as I, I don't teach my kids hate, and I'm glad that I didn't suck in the hate that, that my family uh, had to. Well, just remember something, Charlie. It's important. You're doing something now. Just by calling up and expressing yourself and being truthful about your story and what your battles have been as it pertains to your family and beyond, it's a credit to you as a man. The bottom line is is that you've taken a phenomenal step forward, more so than your other family members, because unlike a lot of people, you had the courage to do that. A lot of people don't have the courage to do that. They'll just go along to get along, and they'll adopt the mentality of those closest to them because they believe it's right, and they don't tend to think for themselves. You didn't do that because you're a God-fearing, decent human being who cares enough to think and delve deeper and think differently, and that's a credit to you. And by virtue of you doing that alone, so many of the listeners have it right now. Listening to you give you a lot of credit. You've changed lives just by by making this call, my man. Well, Stephen A., I appreciate you. I mean, I'm going a, I'm to a try to keep doing what I can. All right, and, buddy. Uh, man, uh, you, you, you have a good day. You do the same, buddy. Always appreciate guys like that. Appreciate his honesty. Be thankful for that. Everybody, does, everybody doesn't have the courage or even the thoughtfulness to be as open and honest as he just was. I really appreciate that. 866-729-ESPN. More of your calls in a minute. This is Stephen A. Smith Show. On ESPN Radio. Guess what? You're in the middle of the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. Damn it, I mean it! One of the other things that get on my nerves, getting back to the Rams for a second, just thinking about them. Did y'all know the Rams stopped the league high 29% of runs against them for no gain or loss? 29% of the time. No gain or a loss on running plays against them. But you don't want to take care of Aaron Donald. Meanwhile, offensively, you punted a league high 52.4% of your offensive drives. Punt it. Can't do nothing offensively. Defense stopping everybody from running against them. But you you, you, you want to be hardball, play hardball with Aaron Donald. <sighs> Goodness. By the way, I said it yesterday. I'll say it again. Des Bryant. And I said this. I explained it this morning even better on first take. I talked about Des Bryant and you know, people, particularly those within the African-American community, getting on him because he doesn't have much to say about the protests. He doesn't want to touch that stuff. Ladies and gentlemen, in 1947, when baseball was being integrated by Jackie Robinson, he was handpicked by Branch Rickey. It wasn't just because of his athletic ability, his baseball prowess or anything like that. It was because of his temperament. Because Branch Rickey knew what level of venom and vitriol would be aimed in his direction. And he knew that it took a special kind of person to handle that onslaught of venom. And the Satchel Pages of the World and others, you know, whoever was available at that particular time when Jackie Robinson was chosen, didn't necessarily have what Jackie Robinson had as a disciplined military man. As an individual that just knew how to carry himself in a very polished and pristine fashion in the face of no matter what adversity came his way. All of those things had to be taken into consideration. Branch Rickey knew what place Jackie Robinson would have to be in. And I'd have to accept it. And I'd have to have the, temp- the temperament to achieve what he needed to achieve. Des Bryant has a checkered past. It isn't pristine. He's also not the most, I'll tell you, I'm not calling him dumb by any stretch of the imagination. Very smart guy. I know him. Well, I've spoken to him on several occasions, rather. Not questioning his intelligence, but everyone ain't the, ain't the smoothest communicator in the world. They don't always say the right things the right way. Hell, I don't. And give credit to Des Bryant for knowing his lane and knowing his place and and saying, you know what? This is not something I believe I would be good at. He understands what his limitations are. And understands that certain fights are made for others to make. I can't knock Des Bryant for that. I just can't. 866-729-ESPN. Let's go. 
to Oscar in L.A. You're live with Stephen A. What's up, Oscar? What's up, Stephen A. Smith? I'm all right. Go ahead. I want to talk a little bit about, about the rant, man. I just I, I can't believe what they're doing. It's just, I mean, they're overpaying, you know, to get, they, they overpaid to get Jared Goff. They overpaid uh, uh, Austin. They overpaid Robert Woods. They can't pay Aaron Donald. It's just, I, I don't get it. This is this, this is the guy that you want to buy his jersey. You want to, like, go out to the store and buy his jersey. And these guys are making it hard for fans in L.A. to jump and, you know, be a Rams fan. I, I just, I don't get it. To me, it's, it's, in, it's insane. I just, I, I just can't believe it, you know, knowing that they're making these moves and they're just, the front office is a mess. I, I really don't know what they're doing. And if somebody has answers, they better start, like, working something up because it's just, it, it's insane. It's insane. It's insane. I tell you this much. I, t- I, t- I tell you this much, too. Let me tell you something right now. There's a lot of stuff, there's a lot of stuff to do in L.A., you know. You don't need to go to the football game. You got, you got the Chargers and the Rams 17 miles apart, actually about 12 miles apart. And by the way, They'll be playing about 12 miles apart. And by the way, September 17th, December 10th, and December 31st, mark those dates down. Those are the three dates that both teams are playing in L.A. on the same day. The Rams and the Chargers. I got news for you. You better stay stay away from the 405. Don't go near there. Don't you do it. Appreciate the call, Oscar. Thanks a lot. Dominic, you're live with Stephen A. on ESPN Radio. What's up, man? What's up, Stephen? How's it going, brother? I'm all right. Talk to me. Good, good. I, I wanted to speak about the Des Bryant comments. You know, you really hit the nail on the head. Like you said, some people are better adept and better equipped to fight these battles. And I also think that his comments were pretty telling, just the fact that, you know, the free, uh, quote-unquote freedom of speech aspect for the National Football League, uh, how how they really feel about that, how players really feel about that, just him saying that I have a family to feed. And even him being the elite player that he is, he still has in the back of his mind, it seems like, you know, oh, I could be a couple of guys out here looking for a job. Your signal's bad, bro. I got you. I got your point. I appreciate it. But your signal's too bad. I can't let you continue. Thanks a lot for the call. Let's go to Brian in New Haven. You're live with Stephen A. What's up, Brian? Hey, Stephen A. Thanks for taking the call, man. Go ahead, man. Uh, really want to give a lot of credit to the guy, Charlie, who called earlier. He, uh, he made some really solid points about, you know, what it takes to stand up and do the right thing, even in the face of your family. And it kind of harkens back to why I originally called with uh, your comment earlier about the NFL PA and the head of the PA and his relationship with, uh, with the commissioner. Goodell. Cause the, yeah, with Goodell. Cause the bigger problem is his relationship and the NFL PA's relationship with each other. Uh, the secret to a strong union is a strong union of players. And uh, in whether it's well, I don't think the players like are weak. This, I, I don't think the players are weak. I think what happens is, is that they defer to their leadership to some degree. And the leadership usually gives the impression uh, that the legal route uh, is the way to go. And I think that's the problem in today's uh, generation between the relationship with the players and the players association. I'm sorry, the players association and the league office. I think this is about the Morris Smith and Roger Goodell. I, I, I think you, I think you certainly have a point. I think there's a, I think there's something to be said though, of a lack of engaged behavior on the part of the players. And that this, you can take it to Kaepernick. You can take it to, uh, the Ezekiel Elliott situation, uh, when the when the players, and whether they're white, black, brown, with purple polka dots, it doesn't really matter. When everyone stands up and realizes that there's an actual problem and what the uh, what the reaction to that problem can be, you, you will certainly find, just like in the instance of Charlie, like you say, he affects the lives of everybody that he list, that listens to your show. You'll see in an inevitable response because the people who watch it, especially the youth will say, listen, everybody's standing up next to each other. There's a problem. There's something that will actually be done by yeah. everybody standing next to each other. I got you. I appreciate that point, Brian. Thank you so much, man. Thank you for the call. Keep them coming. Eight six six seven two nine espn We will close out the show uh, with your calls in a minute. By the way, uh, that car crash that rammed into the crowd in Barcelona, Spain, at least 13 people killed and 50 injured in Barcelona van attack, says government official. One person has already been arrested. This is according to CNN. Um, but more is coming. 
We'll find out. Terrorist attack. It's what they're thinking it is. All right. Stephen A. Smith show closing out the call. Closing out the show with your calls in a minute. You're listening to the Stephen A. Smith show podcast. Back to the phones we go before we get on out of here for the day. Stephen A. Smith show ESPN radio. Let's get to it. Let's go to James. You're live with Stephen A. What's up, James? How are you? Hey, Stephen. Uh, I don't know if you can verify this or not, but rumor is that Aaron Donald turned down a six-year, $120 million deal because he couldn't, I, get an opt, he couldn't get an opt-out after the year three. Um, I'll double-check that. I'll find out about that. If I don't have that information for yeah. you before the show, I'll double-check it tomorrow. Okay, yeah, they said that it would have made him the highest-paid defensive player. Mm. You know what? Here's the deal. If he wanted an opt-out, I'm sure he didn't ask for anything that any of the other guys asked for. And that's the key. And my point is, is that when you have a talent like this and you have stunk as long as Los Angeles, I'm sorry, the Rams have stunk, then you know what? You might have you, you might have to capitulate significantly. That's my point. But if that is true, then obviously you got to rethink it to some degree in terms of how hard I came down on the Rams. I came down on the Rams because really, if I'm being totally honest with you, James, I can't believe they, they allowed Jeff Fisher to stick around as long as he did. I'm really down on this organization because of how long they kept Jeff Fisher around. I'm telling you right now, if it wasn't for us going off about him, they'd still have him as their coach. They'd still have him as coach. I mean, it was so bad, I wondered whether he had pitches on somebody or something. I didn't understand it. Who knows? Yeah, how about that? Thank you, James. Appreciate the call. Darnell, you're live with Stephen A. Go ahead, buddy. Hey, Stephen A., I want to first uh, thank you for uh, introducing me to Joe Madden, Joe Madison, the Black Eagle. That's right. But um, one, one thing about Colin Kaepernick, I, I agree with everything you're saying about him, and the big hang-up is about the flag. The most disrespectful flag to African Americans is the, uh, the Confederate flag. Hank Williams Jr., who's op- who opens up every Monday night football, if you go to his Facebook page, he sells Confederate flags with his face all over it. So what's the difference? They have no respect for us as African-Americans. What offends us, that flag, and they open up every football game with him singing, and then they're making a fuss about Calvin. Let me ask you a question. What were you doing in regards to the national anthem before Colin Kaepernick knelt? I, I stand for it. All right. What I about what? The, uh, and, and wouldn't you say that's the case with most folks, whether black or any other yeah. minority? Yes. So so why do we treat the Colin Kaepernick kneeling for the national anthem as if this has been an ongoing growing protest that has spanned decades when most of us never even thought about it until he took a knee? It's not like we're the Native Americans and we've been protesting certain derogatory names associated uh, with, you know, with our culture all of these years. That's not that has not been the case for African-Americans. Correct. So what I'm saying but, to but you, is that, pe- go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. But my, my thing is, like, um, so many people are offended by him not standing for the flag, and African Americans are, are offended. I drive trucks, and I listen to you every day. Our company, the company that I drive trucks for, will not allow their, any of our drivers to uh, fly that flag in their truck as long as they're driving for the company, just out of respect for the people that that flag offends. Got it. And Hank Williams Jr. opens up football, and if you go to his Facebook page, that's all you see on his Facebook page. Got you. Okay. I got it. Noteworthy. No question. Chuck in L.A., you're live with Stephen A. Chuck, good afternoon. How are you? I have an idea. For every one of the Confederate statues that needs to come down, and that come down years ago, it was built. Hey, Chuck, time- Chuck, Chuck you, you, we can't hear you. Something's wrong with your signal. I'm very, very sorry. I couldn't hear you. Mark in Rochester, you're live with Stephen A. What's up? Hey, Stephen, thanks for taking my call. Lots of respect, man. I appreciate it. No problem. Go ahead. Um, Real quick, I just wanted to say I think you make an awesome point when you said that the uh, discrimination extends way beyond what we've just seen in the the past uh, few years according to the protests. I mean, Mm -hmm. if you look even before Jackie Robinson and just in baseball, you know, Japanese-Americans, Italian-Americans, Irish-Americans, you know, the discrimination goes back way way into our history as a country. Mm-hmm. But one thing I do want to say about Colin Kaepernick to give him his, uh, his due is that you see, although the attention I think that's going to the African Americans is because of, we see the African Americans that are standing up for it and that are the ones that are protesting. 
I think that even today, you know, like, just like you said, African Americans aren't the only ones that are getting the bad rap or that, that are getting that are getting stifled. Um, yep. But but you see, the African Americans are the only ones that are standing up. Um, so I think I think it says a lot about. Um, about what, about what yeah, we're, well, we're African Americans, African Americans have a, a longer history of being denigrated and and a lot of other, and a lot of other things that I'm not going to get into right now. But I appreciate the call. Thank you so much, Brett and El Segundo. Brett and El Segundo, you're live with Stephen A. Go ahead, Brett. Hey, buddy, how you doing, Stephen A? I'm doing all right. Thank you for calling. What's up? Hey, I'm taking a little bit different. I got a little bit different. About this whole thing, like uh, I know you've been calling out for some of the athletes to get more involved and so forth. And, and I just think, you know, I think it, it does more damage. For instance, uh, uh, so Newt, he uses the so-called president term. He, he loses me. And uh, there's nothing he's going to be able to tell me that I'm going to go, okay, yeah, he's making a valid point. I mean, this is a guy, he's, he's got a high school, you know, high school diploma and he plays basketball. So what is he going to tell me as a, you know, middle-aged white guy that, uh, uh, you know, it's going to be can I ask you a question? Can I ask you a question? Let me ask you a question, Brett, real quick. When LeBron James speak, do you do you listen? Do you care? No, I don't. No, I don't really care because I, you know, listen. I I, I watch basketball. I, I like you know the great player, great athlete. Although I'm a Kobe fan, but he's a great athlete and and so on. But he's not going to have listen if he's going if he's going to reach out to other people. That's great. But the problem here is is that you need the white man to realize what's going on and and racism exists and and by not standing for the flag the national anthem or whatever that's not going to solve it man There's, people people hate it, it should, so it, let me be let me be clear let me be clear brett because we only because we're running out of time what you're saying is is that white athletes need to stand up and they need to speak out against what's right what's wrong Somebody kneeling for the national anthem or whatever, that's not going to do. That's not going to create change. You hear what they're saying. You're not necessarily disagreeing with it, but what you're saying is that's not going to promote the change that they need. It's going to take involvement from white athletes. Yes or no? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Correct. Okay. Correct. I, I'm running out of time. That's the only reason I'm cutting you off, Brett. Uh, call back any time, and I'm happy to have this discussion with you further. Thank you so much. we got to get on out of here for the day. But I will be back in 22 hours. The Stephen A. Smith Show, ESPN Radio, signing off. Peace and love. That's just a sample of what you'll hear on the Stephen A. Smith Show. Weekdays at 1 p.m. Eastern on Sirius XM Channel 80 and the ESPN app.